Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Iron Kaiser Gaming. Got a different kind of video for you guys today. We're looking at the Age of Empires 2 Gold and Glory mod. And I've got a buddy with me here. I got Jimmy James 59 on the phone. Jimmy, how you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. Hello, hello YouTube out there. What's up? <laughs> uh, good deal, good deal. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty great mod that we've got today. The Golden Glory mod is a mod that I featured on my channel before, and I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the screen right now. Uh, but what they're seeking to do is introduce several different civilizations to the game. Uh, actually, quite a few. And what I thought would be fun in this video is to look at the different civilizations and the, uh, the draft of their various uh, attributes and, and features and just kind of share reactions based on how thematic they feel, how strong they feel. And uh, I think it'd be a really fun video. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, I think before I hit the first sieve, I do want to read the philosophy real quick and maybe put a couple of um, qu uh, qualifiers out there, or qualifications. Um, first, uh, my hat is off to Anitarian, Chuko Noob, and Thangoman. Uh, these three guys are the ones that have made this mod, and, and my hat is off to everybody who takes the time to, to mod these sieves. And, um, I've talked with Anitarian a little bit. This guy knows his stuff. Uh, he definitely uh, has a game plan for all of these, these sieves. So, um, again, kind of my, my, my kudos to them. Um, take a look, too, at the philosophy section. New sieves should be marginally stronger than existing ones. At least initially so, they can compete with more familiar civilizations. Uh, and I think of, of all of the philosophy notes, that's maybe the most important one. Uh, so we see kind of the target that, they're, that the devs are aiming for. Um, with that in mind, let's see how well they did. Uh, let's jump right in first to the Afghans. Uh, they have been featured on the channel before. And here's what they've got. Their civilization bonuses. Universities can be built in the feudal age, and you can use the university to research age ups. Eco buildings provide plus five population space. Blacksmith armor techs are merged. That means that you can just research one armor tech and you're getting it all. The, the archer armor, the infantry armor, the cab armor, it's all one technology. Foot, armor, uh, foot archers get an additional pierce armor every age. And step lancers, camels, and elephants get plus two line of sight. So um, let's just maybe freeze right here before we even get to the unique text and, and the unique unit. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, go ahead and tell me what you think about this one. I, I, I showed this off in my video, and I thought it was really interesting. I, I think that the, the bonuses are unique. They, they give the Afghans a unique flavor because the archers, you're, you're very much pushed into the archer focus, the... The archers with the extra right, armor. Right. The the university built in feudal age means you can pick up ballistics faster. Um, those are sort of the things that I saw. What do you think about the Civ? So the, the first thing to me that stands out as potentially broken mm -hmm. is... Uh, by the way, like just looking at the Civ, it seems really cool. And I think it has a lot of uh, unique characteristics that we can mm -hmm. we can talk about that is... Uh, but the foot archers plus one pierce armor per age. The thing I'm... I'm seeing just kind of scrolling down to the technology tree here is mm -hmm. that it doesn't look like you're actually missing any blacksmith upgrades. And mm -hmm. so if foot archers, so there's two things on this one, it's not clear whether foot archers is inclusive of a unit like say skirmishers or not. So right. Right. like with the Italians, the Pavisa technology, right. That excludes skirmishers. Right. But right. you know, the Britons have this right. where like, Foot archers get, you know, only the uh, the archer line gets the range upgrades, yeah. but then the yeoman tech also applies to skirm. So that's something I think that I'd recommend to the uh, the mod creators here. You probably want to clarify that. But something that we I talk about a lot on my channel actually is I have this expression that uh, that archers fight at the margins, and what that means is that since pierce damage is usually so low then mm. adding one more pierce armor uh, has a drastic impact. And so one of the ways you can see this in in the game was when the Turks got that plus one pierce armor added to their scouts, right? Spirit of the Law, mm -hmm. shout out to that dude. Mm -hmm. He um, he did a really nice video on that that demonstrates the fact that 
you know, once you so once you have that plus one pierce armor, like all of a sudden, like if you take like Turk Light Cav, Turk Light Cav because of that plus one pierce armor can tank like as many yeah. shots as a knight. And that's that's incredible, right? And so if we're talking about foot archers that already get all of the existing blacksmith technologies, we're talking about foot archers having seven pierce armor. Um so you know that's that's extremely dominant and it looks like this is kind of now there's no cavalry archer in the tech tree so it looks like it's just going to be for their arbalist um and there's no elite skirmisher either so that would just apply to the regular skirmisher um i think i i think and i think that for the like your an arbalist with seven pierce armor to me seems absolutely bonkers um i would be really yeah. interested i would be more interested though if they didn't get the arbalist upgrade and you had like crossbows with with seven pierce armor just because like if you think of the the commander in tech for persians right like right you know commander and crossbows like because you miss arbalist and because you miss bracer like they kind of struggle to to do damage like you're gonna have more dps than a skirmisher in a lot of cases because you have a faster firing rate and all that. But, um, but yeah, so I think that the plus one pierce armor per age, that's one that kind of, that's mm -hmm. one that stands out to me because you get the arbalist upgrade and because you don't miss any armor upgrades the way it's written on here, like these arbalists would be nasty. I like the idea that they don't get elite skirmisher though. Skirmishers with just like a ton of pierce armor and that they just like right. have this survivability. That's interesting to me. I read the bonus assuming that he was referring exclusively to the archer line, but but you're right that there is some ambiguity there that if it extends to hand cannons or it extends to, to well, they don't have hand cannon, but if it extends right, to skirmisher, right. that would be very, very strong indeed. Yeah, yeah, but they don't get elite skirmisher though, right? So right. that's like, I, I think that that's, that to me is the, the interesting balance there, but mm -hmm. man, the ar but, the ar but these arbalists, like they're going to, it's hard for me to imagine like this could be like the top arbalist civ mm -hmm. in, in my mind just because uh you know like if you're another archer civilization like i think you really or i mean like skirmishers would have a re oh, i think a lot of trouble countering because like skirmisher basically what this bonus would do against skirmishers is it's like negating almost negating their bonus damage against archers in the first place um and like now I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that because the thing about skirmishers should probably still win that fight because it's the fact that skirmishers have such high pierce armor mm -hmm. that really enables them like to just stick around a whole lot. But that, that's just one of those things. If I if I were going to wanna to wanna, uh, I'd say like you know like like op test like right. anything in there just to check for where maybe what the balance should be. Um, because you could do something like that with the two because. Here's the other thing too, and I say this a lot on my channel, and I, I I'd encourage like anybody who's like a who's a I'd encourage any player, but definitely if you're learning the game, mm -hmm. to think not about how the game winds up at its end state, but how the game uh, plays throughout the ages. So right, so right. think about this, right? You're in the feudal age, and you have archers that have plus one pierce armor. So if you have you could have archers with two pierce armor, right? Um, that just gives you in feudal age like. Like, even just from the jump, like, you're getting the Korean bonus basically for free almost, but you can also stack another armor upgrade on it. And that's where, like, yeah. that example with the Turk scouts come to play because now you just can have, like, I worry, I worry as as much as I can see it really being dominant, like, late in the game too, I actually worry a lot more that what this does is that the feudal age balance mm -hmm. is changed in such a way to where, uh, you know, Afghan archers in feudal age just wind up becoming like uncounterable and and so that's so that that's the way i'd think about it right is in terms of you yeah. know i think it's really and, in feudal and, and castle age where it kind of gets skewed yeah and, and i agree with you and I, I think that looking at some of the other bonuses it just adds to the strength of their archer rush the fact that the eco buildings right. provide additional pop space means you're not yeah. having to invest as much into the early house yeah you, know, you know your wood economy right in order to get your yeah. your pop space running uh, the university in the feudal age, you can use that to tech up into castle, so you can keep your TC running, going into the. Uh, that's the, really good. Yeah, into the castle. So that I think that's, I think it's uh, is it four bills if I remember correctly. I, I took some notes. 
Uh, which, by the way, uh, two things real quick. Um, I'm definitely going to have a link to Jimmy James' channel uh, in the description oh, below. Thanks. So absolutely go check out his stuff. He's got a lot of great uh, videos for you know kind of that mid-ELO, low-ELO, um, kind of like my own channel. Uh, really great guy. Uh, yeah, but also, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, and I appreciate I appreciate that a lot, and I like to shout out your channel as uh, as much as I can because I think uh, you've thanks, done a really man. nice job growing it. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks, so, I, I appreciate that. Appreciate the other thing too, just for you guys watching, I, I forgot to mention this in the intro, but um, I've seen these sieves, so I have a little bit of a, an awareness of what's coming. I'm throwing these at Jimmy blind. I don't think he's ever okay. seen these sieves before, so that's part of what makes this fun uh, yeah. for me is kind of those those immediate reactions. Uh -huh. right. But anyway, so yeah, uh, I think with the university teching up to the Castle Age, uh, not even thinking about what you could do from Castle to Imp, but that's allowing your TC to continue running. That's uh, four more bills I think you can pick up over your opponent, all other things being equal. And then you already have the university, so you can get your uh, ballistics tech uh, much faster than anybody else. Uh, with right, because you don't so, have to take the time to build it, right? Exactly. Yeah. So just the the strength of the Afghan archer play seems very, very strong. Yeah, and that's what I kind of like about the design of this mm -hmm. sieve in that you can you can see a path to get to that strong foot archer play. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, so which is to say it a different way, right? Like the the sort of the macroeconomic principles mm -hmm. behind, you know, how you translate that into military power are integrated into the civilization bonuses. And so, so you can see this, you can see this feeling like a really smooth civilization to play. And, and, and I don't think that, I think I like the university bonus quite a bit because you got to remember too, mm -hmm. right? In feudal age in feudal age, building a university, like that's a time period where wood is really scarce. Yes. So yeah. it's really hard to like, you have to commit a lot to building uh, a university at that time and i actually i love this bonus with economic buildings providing mm -hmm. uh, extra population space as well because you know one of the things again thinking about this from like a strategic point even in like in dark age like one of the big considerations that you make is whether or not you want to play something like you know like one lumber camp or or go for a two lumber camp right. uh, uh transition for more efficiency and this would create something really interesting where you could you know you could go on like go in on like one lumber camp, but you're also kind of saving a house too. Yeah. And so, you know, or on the other hand, like if you go with that two lumber camp setup, you know, as well, it's, it's kind of like you're saving two houses. And so I like I think this really in some interesting ways affects what you do in, in Dark Age because a lot of times those Dark Age builds mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of built around build putting your houses down at like the most efficient times. And so imagine like if you put down your first two houses, if you put down a lumber camp and a mill, like you never even have to put down houses yeah. in, in the rest of dark age. And so this feels really comparable to me with the, like some, an eco bonus, like the, uh, like the Incas have where their houses have double population. Exactly. Space. Yeah. So that's, yeah. and so, I, I, and so that seems, you know, I'm not, and I'm not even sure if this bonus is stronger than that because in fact, this bonus does feel weaker than that to me just because, you know, the, from a resource perspective, right, the Incas are getting an extra five population space for what's an investment of 25 wood. And here mm -hmm. you're getting an extra population space for an investment of 100 wood. Yeah. So it's not it's not as good of a bonus. Yeah, but it does people. provide just Reasons that little bit of balance. flexibility. Yeah. Exactly. Where exactly. You, you mentioned the double lumber camps or in my own gameplay, and another one I ran into was, uh, if you're ever debating whether or not you should mill those deer, you know, right. or, or, or go, yeah, out, go out and take point. care of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. this makes that choice just a little bit easier, you know, and you're exactly. getting more out of it. Like it. That's so, true, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like this civ a lot. Um, I, I love, one of the things I do enjoy is our civilization designs that point you in a certain direction. Uh, so yeah. I, I do like how there's a flavor to the sieve. It's pretty strong. Looking at the unique text real quick, um, we've got good riders in the castle age giving step lancers plus three attack hmm. for 300 food and 300 gold. And then in the imperial age, this one's big. Samarkand engineers, trebs can be created from siege workshops. Yeah, I kind of like that here. actually. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, especially, yeah, this is, this is a sieve that, that doesn't get bombard cannons. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 
I think a big question would be, and you do get siege engineers, so that's interesting. Um, I, I, I could. I could see that though. I, 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 that seems that seems pretty doable to me. And I think that the Castle Age tech. I mean, you know, step lancers are kind of, kind of a glass cannon unit. So, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I think it's a fine tech, but I'm not sure that a lack of damage is to make like the step lancer line viable. And this kind of does seem like from the team bonus where like. I think you are kind of funneled into wanting to go step lancers here mm -hmm. um because you also looking at the tech tree you don't get cavalier either so like right step lancers like uh elite step lancers are probably going to be your most powerful unit in the imperial age and you know and maybe that's and, may, and i think that's probably the reason for this bonus like kind of thinking about that because now your step lancers your elite step lancers are going to have 17 attack i think it is um unless i think do they get blast does it get blast furnace i think they do so mm -hmm. that would be like 11 yeah. plus 4 plus 3 so that's actually eight so you're gonna have the same attack as paladins at one range but you're not gonna have the hp i mean yeah so so it's basically like making step lancer like a. It, it's like a, a like this glass cannon that you know probably it profiles a little bit to me like the lightest mm -hmm. just kind of thinking mm -hmm. about it and the, like the lightest right. is like like 70 food 50 gold step lancers are like 70 food and like 40 gold but nice. the lightest is going to have more hp and you can i think get to more i think you can get to more attack so yeah i i think that this i'm not sure that it I think in some matchups it won't be able to replace the knight because just the fact that the knight's value is in part in its DPS, but another part of that the is tankiness its ability. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, which which is fine. Like it's good for units to have mm -hmm. to have trade offs. And so, on right. the one hand, I think that you know making the thinking of this as like, well, yeah, this is a glass cannon unit, and so you know it does have that trade off. Like that's the right. good side. But thinking about it not from a balanced perspective. But from like a player's perspective and how I use it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this civ is, you know, you're going to be. I think it's it's not going to be it's not going to be a power unit in that same way to where like you know if you're up against archer civilizations, I think you could still probably run into some troubles because maybe you just won't be able to to, to close the distance if the numbers get to a certain point. Right. So, but but again, like I think that that. that you already have good archers, so yeah. it's uh, you know, that, I think it's a fine trade off. So I, I don't, I, yeah, I it, think I think after thinking about it, I'm I'm kind of on board with it actually. It, it's kind of funny how it almost inverts the normal formula where you have right, tank yeah. your archers and more yeah, powerful that's calf. True, yeah, so, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, there's a synergy there to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then we've got the unique unit here, the Khorasani archer, which is an anti infantry archer. Um, which is kind of an interesting label to me because yeah. uh, the archer's already uh, kind it's of an anti-infantry yeah, unit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in my talks with um, Anatarian, which uh, was a couple of months back, I'm trying to pull back from my old memory, but I think he has in mind almost more of a, it's like almost like a kind of a hand cannon sort of thing, or it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's an archer that has only four range, so right. you know, less than, than normal, uh, but has a lot of additional bonus damage versus spear spearmen and infantry uh, right. which is i guess interesting to me I, I think your archers are already so strong i don't quite see the point yeah but um at least that's my thing I, do you see anything in, in the description here on this unique unit that maybe stands out for you well i mean the other big thing to look at here is that it has uh archer armor bonus mm -hmm. so unit so this is I think we would read that as any unit, any unit that's doing bonus damage against units in the archer class. So that's going to be skirmishers. Right. So, all right. So a real question for this from a design perspective is whether or not this unit benefits from that foot archer bonus of plus one pierce armor per eight. Oh uh, yeah. Because, yeah. 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 Because, because if, if it does, then uh, that's just kind of absurd because the hidden armor already negates what skirmishers do and then attack another three pierce armor like like any archer class unit is only going to do like yeah. one damage uh and that's like and that would be kind of mind-boggling 
But if on the other hand, I think that they don't benefit from that and the hidden armor there is basically there to kind of be a substitute for the fact that they don't, um, then 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 that's fine in that matchup, you know, in that and thinking about that matchup mm-hmm. versus like skirmishers. So this unit could be this unit could actually oh, I think is interesting. It could be potentially pretty strong. This is like the Huskarl killer to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> because because it's doing bonus damage against infantry, but it's also negating, you know, about half of the Huskarl's uh bonus damage uh mm-hmm. against archers, right? right? And so that so um and <laughs> that'd be kind of interesting to see actually how that would play out. Um but but yeah, so which is which is a way of saying like I think you're right, you know, in the in the sense that like your your archers are your archers are already anti infantry, so it feels a little bit redundant. But that hidden armor to me, I mean, also because you're gonna because I'm trying to think of the units that do bonus damage against archers, other than like skirmishers and the huskarls. Well, Gulam, mm-hmm. we'll throw that in there. So like this unit would like. To like tear apart Gulam, which like we could probably use a few units. To, like, <laughs> we could do that, <laughs> honestly. Right. right. Um, I'm trying to think of any other units that do like anti archer bonus damage, right? Um, um, so what yeah, you're imagining know. is, or, or, or if I'm understanding you right and understanding the, the unit right, this is almost like an archer version of a Haskarl, where uh, you mm-hmm. have a unit that is resistant to what normally will defeat this type of unit right Right, so so skirmishers will not be nearly as effective against the Khorasani Uh, and then they do a great job of kind of knocking out infantry whereas the Skarl reduces the infantry damage and takes out archers so you can kind of mix these guys in with your crossbows your arbalest yeah Um, and and when I think about late game compositions I mean if you with like this like Khorasani archer if you pair this because it looks like the civilization gets uh, you know, Hussars with uh, with all the fixins. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now you have a Khorasani archer that's basically getting, like, you know, I mean, something close to, like, Parthian tactics from that perspective of being able to do that bonus damage against the spear line. And so if you're playing something like, you know, this Khorasani archer plus Hussar, now all of a sudden, you know, like, it's going to be really tough mm-hmm. to go halves as your trash unit, right? On the other side of that right. to try to like thin out, you know, the, to try to keep whatever unit is. Right. And that's where I think this gets, and so like, man, that's where it gets kind of, uh, and that's what gets kind of interesting, I think, because, you know, man, if you like, if you could mix in, that's where I think the course on the archer and the foot archers, that pierce armor per age, that's where I think, that's where I think it has a really interesting trade-off because if you're making Coruscant archers, right, you're not going to have that extra DPS to thin out halves, right? Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's the reason you want to go into you want to take into Coruscant uh, the Coruscant archers because you're playing some you're playing them with uh, light cav as a trash unit. But on the other hand, right, if your opponent is taking into uh, the archer line themselves, like you want to go with your foot archer line because I'm just going to assume right here that you know. That the course on the archer is like not gonna you know right you know maybe doesn't benefit from it um because the hidden archer armor like it's important just to like to be completely clear like that's only really against bonus damage so it's not something that's like i think is you know like necessarily as op in all circumstances right. the issue though is just like skirmishers are like one of the counters against archers and so right. uh if you use this like you're kind of taking the skirmisher off the table and we see how strong like the rattan archer is when you get to it and uh and this like potentially kind of feels you know like something like close to a rattan archer but you're also like you know like gutting infantry as well and the fact that you could probably still use that you might be able to even out with husk is super mm-hmm. interesting but i think that there is like i think that you based on what like if you're up against another archer sieve um you know there's definitely an argument you know like there's definitely an argument to go, you know, with foot archers that have the the plus one pierce armor. So yeah, um, it's a really it's a yeah no it's a it's a neat unit I think for sure. All right, cool. So let me ask you this then, and then we'll move on to our next sieve. Uh, two questions: one from a flavor point of view, like how exciting do you think it would be to play this civilization? With one being like this doesn't really add a lot 
Five being, yeah, this is this is really, really cool. Uh, I, I can really see how the, the synergies work and it'd be a lot of fun to play. And then two, how OP do you think this design is? With one being, all right, this is maybe, you know, uh, really underpowered. It's not adding a lot. Three being, it's right on the money with, you know, the other sieves in the game. And five being, this is broken. This is way too strong. Where would you kind of rate this sieve? Yeah, so I think from I'll 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 go I'll go backwards I think and so mm-hmm. um, I think from then like a, a one to five skill for OP I think it all just comes down to the the foot archer pierce armor I don't see anything else to me that really stands out as potentially overpowered and again it comes back to that fact that you know I, I worry about because the, the thing about feudal age and what makes feudal age uh, what makes it, you know, balanced is that like civs have a lot more in common with one another in the feudal age mm-hmm. than right. they do in the late game. And so, I would be, I think, from a from a from a op sort of balanced perspective, I think you have to be really careful about how you how you affect the feudal age in the game. And so, mm-hmm. what I might think about if if I were if I were going to suggest and I mean, because basically what this bonus does in the feudal age is it negates fletching. Right. And I think we all know how important fletching is to get when you're when right. you're playing archers. And so the fact that like there's a bonus that not only negates it, but then you can research armor and when you're researching armor with the civilization, right? You're also getting archer you're getting armor for all of your other units too. So like that's the thing where like man, like this civilization that tech could be so powerful that it just makes it really hard to deal with the seven feudal age and so and i and and so i that's the thing i worry about is that early game part of it yeah. um and so and, and so so everything is conditional on that and so and so i would say right now it's probably somewhere between a three to a four because i just see it i just see it really hard to play against this sieve yeah. uh uh in the early game and so if i were going to make a like a recommendation is maybe to take a page from the the Teuton uh, civilization where you know the extra melee armor for their infantry starts you get it in castellation mm-hmm. imperial age and so right. maybe that's something because i think that having plus one pierce armor you know in castle age when your opponent already has elite skirmisher if they really want to go that route right. and they're doing a bit more bonus damage then maybe that plus one pierce armor, pierce armor isn't so crazy um right and uh so again that i mean whether but i think everything else to me like so you know but that one thing can be so powerful that right. i think i'd stick into something like a three um in terms of this civilization being fun to play I think it could be really. I, I mean, I really love that that comp of like of foot archers and light calf. I think it's. I think that there's there's a few civilizations in the game that I think can can really do it well. And I think it's. I think it's kind of an uncommon composition, but I think it's really strong, especially on open maps because because hussars just dominate so much, and then foot archers are. A, such a cost efficient unit that so the foot archer is really the only unit that you can start scaling up in terms of numbers from the feudal age right right exactly. uh, in terms of your like in terms of your late game army composition and so but my worry though from a strategic perspective is that you know you have to be really careful about i think how you go about how you go into that. And so I would be worried since you, since, because the civilization is a little like Saracens to me. And like the, from like, it's kind of like half of the Saracens, mm-hmm. but then you get all these like bonuses in terms of quality to your archers. Whereas the Saracens just kind of, I mean, right. The building yeah, bonus is go. awesome. Yeah. The building boss, the building bonus is awesome for your foot archers. But other than that, you know, you do get like this really robust archery range and this sieve doesn't get it, but but I would really, I would worry that there would become, say, like a time in the game where because you don't, it doesn't look like you get, well, you don't miss, 
You miss Cavalier. I so I think the civilization gets camels. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Because you've played them, right? Uh, they get camels. Yeah, I believe they do get camels if I remember correctly. Okay. So that's that's man, that's re- I think that that's really, really strong then if you get camels. Um mm. because because I think that knights could be a problem for the Civ, but if you can go camels, um then that's a really nice cut of line. And they also get it looks like they also get halberdiers as well um it might be worth which i think gives them a lot of flexibility Mm -hmm. in terms of their late game comp it might be worth as i think we've recently seen with hindustanis right when they lost access to the halberdier and i'm not even necessarily you know i kind of had mixed feelings about that i mean in that you know what that did for hindustanis is it really nerfed that like hand cannon comp that you would relate so you can't go hand cannon halberdier and and to me, you know, it was more like, well, you know, like maybe the hand cannons, you know, just have too many bonuses. And uh, just because I think missing missing knights is kind of a is kind of a big deal. And with this civ, you know, it's kind of structured similar because you're missing cavalier. So that's that's why I, I think it invites the the Saracen comparison there. Um, so so I think the fact that you have camels actually, I think that that gives you that gives you some reason where you mm-hmm. could open cavalry and then transition to something like step lancers which is going to be a bit more cost efficient on your gold Mm -hmm. and is going to be doing more base damage than camels so maybe if you're up against you know step lancers i think it's going to be all depending on how you you get the numbers right Um, it also looks like this civilization has elephants too so uh that would be well possibly afghanistan that would that's it says that the elephants get line of sight so uh, and it's yeah yeah well i mean that could be a around. team bonus that maybe they don't themselves take advantage of but i, I think you're right though that that probably does yeah. mean they get elephants and that would yeah the, the stable the stable doesn't have it missing so yeah um so that's the um I, I, you raise, the about, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do want to jump on one thing which you raise a very yeah, good point yeah. too it's one of the things i really like about the civ well, it, it may make it a touch too strong um because mm. my my rating having played the Civ, I think it's a lot of fun to play. Very flavorful, a lot of bonuses that are really neat. I would probably put it down at a four on the op because I think uh, it's both very strong uh, with their archer play. They have very, very strong archers, but there's also this really impressive degree of flexibility. You mentioned the Step Lancers. One of the bonuses that can slip under the radar is just how useful the Blacksmith Armor text being merged Oh, is. yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Because that means you can go all in on archers, and as soon as you decide, hey, you know what? I need step lancers, I need infantry, whatever, you already have all the armor in place. You don't need to tech that up. So yeah, my question for that, too, would be the cost differential. Because, you know, like mm-hmm. the armor techs, you know, the, the, the infantry ones are a little bit cheaper on the armor side than, say, the cavalry ones. Right. So, you know, the, the cost of those techs could probably... Uh, could probably come into play for me and so if there was a sense that how that if that was maybe a little op in some sort of way Mm -hmm. then i think you could probably easily adjust that though by like well if it's really strong then we could increase the cost of it so probably not something you know i i i I think that's such a neat bonus that i I don't i'd rather just kind of like you know right make it you know cost a little more instead of like you know trying to substitute it for another oh i agree it's it's a great bonus yeah yeah Yeah. the other thing too i just mentioned about the civs tech tree is it looks like Mm -hmm. you missed battering ram um, and you also miss siege elephants, so that's really something to think about. The huh. civilization in the late game is that if you want to, um, if you know, so, so, to, thinking of terminology, right? Um, I think I've heard survivalists use this terminology and differentiating between like using units to destroy buildings, which mm-hmm. is, I think you call, refers to that as an assault, and when you use like siege to you know destroy buildings, right? We call it sieging, mm-hmm. and 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 that's a really good differentiation. And so the civilization, right? If you want to initiate a siege on your opponent, you can real you really only have the trebuchet as an option, right? And yeah. again, thinking about them in Castle Age too. I mean, Castle Age Rams, I think, are pretty situational. But if you need to siege, you're going to be in a difficult spot. But if you're trying to assault a civilization with units, you kind of have to recognize that you know because because you miss out on the the night line, which is like I think the primary sort of assault unit in the late game to right. kill production buildings quickly, 
Step right. Lancers with extra attack are, are going to get, are really going to have to be your option. But when it comes to like destroying town centers, you're not going to have that pierce armor. So again, yeah. even from like, even from an assault perspective, I think the civilization uh, could, you could wind up finding at later stages of the game that it's just a, a little bit harder to, to put your opponent away because the buildings just won't go down. And so, uh, and so what that means I, is I hadn't noticed those, that. And those trebuchets then are going to be like really, really valuable because basically, I think if you don't keep your trebs alive, um, it's uh, you know you're, you're going to have trouble getting rid of enemy production, and that enemy production is so important because you know if your enemy right. can't get numbers out, right. then you know eventually you just snowball that to win because I think numbers are kind of everything in this game, right? Uh, in, in a lot of in uh, in late game. Bridge. Yep, yep, that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me ask you one more thing, and then we'll move on to the next sieve. Do you think that the p extra pierce armor on the archers, does that make archers more effective as a raiding unit? Like, you know, kind of dealing with, I I'm thinking about archer versus archer, but what about, like, uh, you know, if you dive under a town center or you have to deal with a watchtower or something, does that, you think, make a big difference? Uh, yeah, I, I de yeah, I definitely think, I think for... And again, that's one of the reasons why I worry about. I would worry about sort of the the early game mm -hmm. with this civilization because, you know, it's those time periods where, you know, you may not have like fletching research, you know, on your town centers or for your watchtowers or something like that, and uh, and you could just tank a lot more. Um, I, I don't think it would matter for castles because you know you're doing so much overkill at that right. point. Right. Um, and yeah, so it probably should make it uh, a much better, a much better raiding unit i'm trying to think of any other sort of instances where uh you know but a, a raiding unit though in terms of survivability but the archers aren't going to have the dps right mm -hmm. so you can't just like you can't sit under town centers forever if you need to like kill that town center because mm -hmm. you're just not going to have the dps to do it so you're going to need some other unit to destroy enemy buildings with right. right 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 yeah. all right next sieve we've cool. got the Arakans. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, they are a Mesoamerican Civ. They're Civ bonus. They start the game with an Eagle Scout. Okay. Eagle Warriors have plus one melee armor per age. Ooh, I like that. Berries last four times as long. Mm. Projectiles move 25% faster. And their team bonus, Spearmen and Skirms, are created 25% oh. faster. Oh, nice. Now... I'm going to jump straight to the text because I think this is the kind of the key element of the Rockins. Irregular warfare. Some cavalry and gunpowder units are enabled. So this is a Mesoamerican sieve that gets access to cav and gunpowder. Specifically, uh, let's see, the light cav line, bloodlines, husbandry, the plate barding armor, hand cannons, and the bombard cannon. And then their Imperial Age tech, Kol... Kolalalun. Eagle Warriors do blast damage. 800 food and 600 gold. So, the, the notes that I've got here, so I, I, I jotted some things down. Um, first off with the berry bushes. right? Normally a berry bush has 125 food. On Arabia, that's six bushes, so 750 food. With this bonus, if I'm understanding this right, you're getting 500 food per bush. 3,000 food total. Just off of a typical Arabia start, mm. and that's a lot of food you can gather before you ever have to get onto to farms and that kind of thing. You know, it's no wood cost or anything like that. Yeah, that's true. The other element, of course, with the Eagle Warriors, you've already got the Aztecs. Uh, their Eagles are they hit harder with Garland Wars plus four attack. The Inca have fabric shields, which makes them a little tankier, particularly with uh, plus two extra pierce armor. So very good uh, with their kind of anti archer side of things. And then with the Mayans, they have El Dorado plus 40 HP, just all around generally healthier. The weakness for Eagle Warriors is supposed to be melee damage, you know, the, the, the infantry fight, right? Mm -hmm. um, does this bonus turn the Eagle Warrior into just a good all around unit where nothing really counters the Eagle Warrior? That's a good question. I mean, the, the one thing about melee damage, though, is that, again, like, this is kind of contrast, right, into the discussion about pierce armor, mm -hmm. is that usually melee damage is so high that it, 
you know, plus one on armor isn't really having the same kind of effect, right? So, like, you mm -hmm. know, for instance, you know, um, like, let's say, like, like knights. So there's two instances to think of here, right? Because the melee units that you would fight against the Eagle Warriors typically would be, like, knights and then the swordsman line, right? Right, um, right. And so with the swordsman line, you're getting so much bonus damage that... You know, like plus three melee armor is not going to turn the fight in favor of eagle warriors so i think it's fine there and i think with a knight when i think of how say like a cavalier with like with, with that misses blast furnace would it still be effective against eagles and i think because eagles have such low hp anyways that i don't think it would turn that fight i mean i'm thinking now i'm thinking in castle age right with a knight if, can you fight uh, effectively against eagles with knights that say, and you haven't researched, uh, you know, any of your attack upgrades yet. I would say, like in a lot of situations, you know, you can. You might need a little bit more numbers of advantage. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel broken to me there. Where, where, where it's going to be, where it's going to be tough, are in those fights against units that do low base melee damage. So this is going to make eagle warriors much better against, say, like hussars, which I think they're already yeah. pretty decent against. Yeah. So you know. So they're going to be really good against Hussars, which I think I kind of like because one of the big weaknesses of most of the American civs has been that they lack Hussars. And so kind of having a unit that, you know, counters it in a way, I think is kind of interesting. Now, this civilization is adding other things that we can talk about in a moment about the, uh, it's already <laughs> adding cavalry. So it doesn't suffer from that deficiency mm -hmm. anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so... But, you know, you'll it will really help you against light cavalry, and it might force your opponent to have to tech into some of those melee attack upgrades, which to kind of to balance it out, which I don't think is the the worst thing, but I'm trying to think some of the lower the lower melee unit. So oh, so like any kind of like I mean any kind of like spear line unit, which you shouldn't be fighting against Eagle Warriors anyways. Right. So again, I don't think it changes I don't think it changes the way that Eagle Warriors play against Halbs in a way that, you know, that would flip the battlefield, uh, that would flip the battlefield on his head. But, yeah, but, um, because again, most melee, most units that do melee damage, I'll tell you what the unit would, this would be great against though, are, uh, are Chakram throwers, mm. right? Because mm -hmm. Chakram throwers do this, you know, they have such low base melee damage that if you add like one melee armor on top of that, like, man, you're really like, right. That will cut out some. So it's it's units like that I think that th this eagle warrior would be. And honestly, like I, I mean, I think shotgun throwers are just like, I, I, it's you know, I mean that's a unit that in my mind needs to be nerfed. But um, so you know, but uh, but maybe the yeah, you know is. the problem for me that but that doesn't mean you know like well that that makes the the melee armor necessarily good just because it affects one unit in the game. Uh, in a way that right. I would like to see, uh, you know, it not be so strong, but that's fine. So, yeah, I, you know, I can see this changing some fights at the margins. And I don't know if I would see it changing fights, you know, because like even in Feudal Age, right, men at arms do enough bonus damage to where I think it's going to be okay. And, you know, it'll really help you get scouts, I think, though. Um, yeah. You know, which, um, but you're still it having to sense. pay gold for eagles, so yeah, yeah I don't know. So, I, so I can see then how it kind of carves yeah. out its own little niche among right, the, uh, right, the eagle right. warrior civs. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Um. And what you said about the berries, I think, is interesting because, man, it really does sound like a lot of food, you know. But on the other hand, the thing about berries is that they collect slower mm. than other food sources, so. Yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like I feel like that's a bonus though that could be easily tinkered with. Like, it's right. four times long too much, maybe. So, so maybe you, you know, if, if it's overpowered, you do like two or three. I, I like the spirit of the bonus. I yeah. would say as much as the exact number is, is kind of a is kind of a who knows to me. Yeah, yeah. The sieve seems to me to the the bonuses lean very heavily into the the castle age. And the Imperial Age. Like you're wanting to get mm -hmm. to Castle Age so you can get out the cavalry option, the gunpowder options, that blows your roster right open, wide open. And yeah. what what you're doing with the berries and then just the faster producing spears and skirms is it's just trying to give you a little bit of extra survivability, kind of like Byzantines. Uh, yeah. It's trying to just give you some extra 
resiliency in the feudal age is you can get to castle age and get to uh, knights. Well, not knights, but the like have. Yeah. Eventually, in imperial age, you get hand cannon, bombard mm-hmm. cannon. Yeah, um, I, uh, I I thought about the Byzantines comparison. I think that's a really interesting one because. You know this team bonus of spearmen and skirmishers creating twenty five percent faster. Mm-hmm. I would I would love for a sieve in the game to have that bonus. Um, I, I've thought about a few sieves. Like I I, I really I would kind of like to see a sieve like Khmer mm-hmm. get that bonus actually, um, because to me it's like this. It would need it's, it's you can kind of like raise this peasant army, mm-hmm. you know, so to speak. Right. And and that's why and it's kind of the flip side of. Byzantines who like to get them cheaper, but it's like, yeah, but you make them faster. And so both of those bonuses affect the quantity of units that you have, right? In in different ways. And so I think it's a I think it's a really I mean, gosh, can you imagine? I mean, this is a team bonus. I might sort of, thinking about it like like when I think about see it sieves you could like if you paired this with Byzantines, like that could be yeah. a, a trash rush in feudal age could be really, really nasty. I don't know. You don't normally see trash rushes mm-hmm. in feudal age and team games, right? Wasn't that the meta um, back in like the mid 2010s? It was like tra- I, th- trash I, think wars. For, I think for one V ones, I mean, I, I know. Yeah. I, it's, I played the game like when it came out and then I'm right. one of those people who like came back to it many years later. Right. Me um, too. But, but I think for 1v1s, I don't know for team games, right? And I think with a team bonus, you always have to think about it in context with uh, with with that team game scenario. And as a as a as a 1v1s as a civ bonus that's unique to the civ, I really like it. As a as a team bonus, like for instance, you pair this with Sicilians that take less bonus damage, that could be a pretty abusive trash rush as well. In feudal age so you know i might think about i might think about moving it to uh to if i were going to change it, hmm, that's a tough one i'm not sure which one i would actually substitute out though for it because it's definitely the one that seems like it has of all of these bonuses it has the most utility to other civilizations uh because i have no idea how to evaluate projectiles moving faster um i think I, I don't think that does anything for your archers but um, yeah. I would imagine, though, it makes your hand cannons, your bombard cannons, a little more accurate. So, so this is the thing that I, and I don't know if this is the case, but right, but, and again, like I think a lot about the early game because that's where because right. things snowball so much in Age of Empires that I think you kind of have to, and I think one of the reasons the game has lasted is not because of its late game balance, but is because of its early game balance. Yeah, and. You know, remembering the right that like when you do archer micro and you go like side to side, mm-hmm. then like a bunch of arrows like just hit the ground, right? And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm the thing that I'm wondering is that if those project an arrow, I think archers have an accuracy of like eighty percent in feudal age, and that's against stationary targets. And so, if projectiles are moving faster, if that means that they that it sort of like in a de facto way increases the base accuracy of the unit. Then what that would do to me is that that makes archer micro like if you if like basically if like if one person like if you do the same archer micro mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they're not getting the benefit out of mm-hmm. it and you are mm-hmm. like that's that's broken because I mean that's how you fight with archers in feudal age right. Um, point, yeah. So yeah so if projectiles like if it creates this like you know like a back door to better accuracy then that's yeah. that's wild yeah um you know but but if on the other hand if it if it doesn't and maybe the real and maybe what it i i feel i mean i feel like it has to create a backdoor to accuracy because you know one of the reasons why you get closer to units sometimes when you might like especially like if you think about in, in castle age right and you're playing with crossbows and you don't have ballistics yet, like you kind of need to close in mm-hmm. to improve that accuracy because when you're microwing, right, and that arrow's in the air, your opponent can kind of dodge it easier, right? Mm, right. And so, and so if the projectile is moving faster, it's harder to dodge. So yeah, it it, it feels and I, it feels like a back door to higher accuracy. And I think you got to be, I think you got to be very, very careful about that. And so if I was, if I was, and I don't know what the right 
change suggestion would be. Well, let me ask you this. What if we see that the tech tree is blank here? What if this did not get ballistics? Ooh, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, that that could be. But again, it's like the, the idea, though, but the idea is like, man, it's like basically if this technology is a substitute for ballistics, like the issue is that you're getting it in futilage. Right. Um, right. And so like, man, like that just, it just, I worry about if I'm up against this sieve, mm. like, like I worry that I won't be able to get out of the futilage <laughs> yeah. against them. Right. Um, especially too, because they have, they can, they have eagles. And so it's not like in futilage, right? Like if you're opening like one range archers or something, which is pretty common nowadays, if you're playing like men at arms into it, like, with the uh, one of the advantages that American civs have in the early game is that because you have it takes a barracks to ac- unlock the access to the other military buildings, you don't need to like invest the wood to make that stable so you can also add scouts into your army, right? You just like you know crack open you know an Eagle Scout, which I know trains slower, etc. But you know, like you know, if you're looking for if you need to add, uh, eagles in there right it's something that you can actually get to um and so yeah it's just i don't know like ballistics and futilage just seems like it seems mental to me and uh mm-hmm. i think if, and i think if i were going to one one alternative might be right because one of the things about thinking about archer micro and one of the reasons it's effective is that arrows that don't hit their intended target but hit a target next to it only do half damage right 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 and that's and that's true i think for I think for every unit, but the Arambi, because that was a change yeah. to the way that Arambi do damage, right? right? And so, and so maybe if you were going to take this out, right? Maybe what you you could do is that, you know, even arrows that don't hit their intended target, maybe do full damage as opposed to half. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you'd have to, or maybe do a percentage of that. Like that might be. I, I guess the thing that I, I wonder with this bonus, like to kind of take a step back, is. Kind of like you were getting with this idea of ballistics. Like, what exactly is this bonus intended to add right. from either like a strategic or a tactical level to the sieve? And at this point, it's just not clear to me what sort of what sort of issue it's meant to uh, to address. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Good, good, good. Uh, let's see. Um, um, we got to talk about the cavalry, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. So like, this is, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, this is wild, bro. Yeah, so you, uh, you get the light cav line with the castellage tech. Um, right. And then you also have their unique unit, the Tokui, which, yeah. so out of the castle, you get a cav unit with bonus damage versus gunpowder and eagle warrior units. Mm. Thoughts? What do, you, what do we think about this? Now, you don't get oh. the night line, you, you know, or step line. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, exactly, just light yeah. cav. So I, I'm trying to remember just from this. So is plate barding armor is. I believe that's that, the, that the, the imp tech. Oh, that's the imp tech. I mean, I'll. Do, I've kind of. I've got it yeah, pulled up right it, here. Like, I'll double check it. Plate it barding goes, Yeah, I think armor. you're right because I think it goes like scale chain plate. Yeah. Right. Oh man, that's yeah. Rude. Oh, I mean, so yeah. You, okay, so this is uh, honestly this is kind of how I feel about uh, this this like this. American civ that can that can make cavalry. Mm-hmm. It feels like a missed opportunity to add the Schlottel warrior into the game yeah. as a relevant unit. I mean, and mm-hmm. I don't know if like because I don't know what Schlottel means or where exactly it comes from exactly, right. but it just feels like you know everybody gets so like you know you're watching like a you're watching like a tournament and um, you know like somebody one of the American civs like Aztecs convert a stable or something. It was like, go oh, a lot of warriors. And like, you know, and occasionally <laughs> like somebody will just like make one, yeah. but you know, you don't get like, you know, but they're kind of pointless in some ways. Right. Because you don't get really the, mm-hmm. the upgrade, I think. Right. Um, I think in like, there's one game setting where you do get the upgrades, but I don't think you do in, in random map. And so this, uh, yeah, this just feels, this feels like a missed opportunity to incorporate a unit that I think, the community would like to see incorporated. Mm -hmm. And the other side of it is that part of what balances out the American civs is that they don't have light cavalry. Um, 
I mean, you know, like you kind of have to, the American Civs are all very gold intensive. And so now I will say, I think without knowing what their tech tree looks like, because that's kind of a question mark. Right. Um, I think it's hard to say because maybe if there are, maybe if there are, are enough things missing from their technology tree that I might go like, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe the sort of the, the typical way you balance the American Civs is like very gold intensive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you know, you have one that, that isn't right. And so that's something to be said, but I just think on the, especially like these Eagle warriors are doing like, they're doing blast damages that they have like an air. Is it like kind of like an area? I, I think it's like trample damage. Yeah. 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 Okay. So like Eagle warriors with extra melee armor, doing trample damage and then i can also spam light cap because eagle warriors are are pretty gold efficient right um man like i i I feel like something has to be missing and then on top of that right you get hand cannons and and bombard cannons as well and again like i what like like what what is it addressing really with cavalry and gunpowder i mean i think you could tell a story of you know like adopting you know and incorporating the military technology of you know like your like your invaders and let's say you know this people you know like encountered like the spanish or maybe the the portuguese or something like that um yeah then i think yeah there's there's a reason i think you could you could adapt it um i do think that maybe gosh hand cannons and bombard cannons seem like seem like a lot though um i mean you're basically i mean you know light cat like fully upgraded light cav and hand cannons and bot like and bombard cannons like these are like like that's a that's a lot to add yeah. to a civilization yeah. um so it would depend on what else is in the tech tree i think yeah no i i, I think that um this is a sieve that is very interesting it's very I think we both kind of keyed yeah. in on this very Byzantine like. Uh, yeah. the, the Eagle Warriors seem to be built very well to be a good trash killer, mm-hmm. um, kind of like a cataf- almost like a cataphract, almost like a cataphract exactly. So yeah, yeah, this yeah. this cataphract like Eagle Warrior um, yeah. doing trample damage and just obliterating light cav, which I guess normally counters uh, the Eagle Warrior effectively, uh, yeah. e- economically speaking. Anyway, so the Eagle Warriors knock them out. They can obliterate you know spears and skirms um uh, so you got a lot you have a lot of options in the castle age starting with the light cab and then the imperial age getting hand cannons bombard cannons and everything and it's just a matter of getting there in the feudal age where the only thing you've really got you have the faster moving projectiles so for archer play that opens up some things and i guess too that would count for your onager as well your mangano Uh, oh that's good And, and bombard cannons too right right so you're more likely to hit your target. Um, yeah. There's a lot of flexibility with this sieve. Um, yeah, and, the, and that's the thing. The American sieves, right, like tend to, like the flexibility with the American sieves always comes with this trade-off of gold, mm-hmm. right? Yes. It's that like yeah. you have to play this really gold intensive style and it feels like, you know, you're on a timer, like unless you're Aztecs with like, five relics but right. <laughs> well, the other ones right i mean it feels like you're always you're always kind of on a timer and uh i think it's worth noting too this unique unit um like it kind of profiles to me like i mean like you can get three pierce armor on a on a cavalry unit that cost 15 gold um mm-hmm. to to create i wonder i don't know i, I like because uh, I'm, I'm thinking like it kind of looks like a Magyar Hazar in some ways. Mm. And then I go like, well, you know, if I was if I was going to make Magyar Hazars and I could like suck up the 15 gold, but get an extra Pierce Hummer on the unit mm-hmm. and then get bonus damage against Gunpowder and Eagle Warriors. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think I think I would make that trade, especially with a civilization where I can just make light cap. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that. I think that I would I would strip some things from this to think about how you would play the cavalry. I mean, still, I just think like you know, just like make this you know make this a lot like bring the gelato warrior in the game. Like I don't know, that'd be cool. But 
I, I definitely agree. I love the idea of bringing the Gelato Warrior in. I just wonder, because the Gelato is essentially a knight, right? So given yeah. that they want to give the Eagle Warrior the extra melee armor, mm -hmm. yeah. is there sort of a strategic overlap where... I mean, let me say it like this way. I think that if I think that if the devs redesigned the Gelato Warrior to be something that's like not a knight surrogate, okay, yeah. I mean, would anybody would it would anybody mind? You know what I mean? <laughs> because because you never you never see the bloody thing, right? right so right. Who, like, I like I would I'd be will I'd be willing to bet, right? You know, like in fact, I would say you know in the comment section below to this video, right? You just let us know here, right? Would you be if we could have gelato warriors in the game, right? Would you be willing out there to, you know, have them change them to maybe profile a bit more, say, like a light cav or something mm -hmm. like that? If it means that we get them at all, um, you know, like yeah. that would be, I don't know, food for thought, right? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Good stuff. So I'd say thematically, I really love the idea of the sieve. Uh, I've got a yeah. soft spot for the idea of a, a mess of sieve where they start taking advantage of these Western technologies and the tools yeah, I of the invader. I, I really love the idea of that. So mm -hmm. uh, thematically, I think it's pretty cool. And I, I like the strategic profile that's being built. There's a lot of flexibility that's nice. A lot of a lot of cool options for the Civ. OP? Mm, I guess for me, the question, you have the tech tree, which that's the tech tree, yeah. leaves a giant question mark. Yeah, I, th I, think that, I think that if I were going to like make suggestions about what the tech tree... Would kind of look like i mm -hmm. think that you would probably want to give this civilization like a really poor swordsman line so what mm -hmm. you're you're mm -hmm. you're reliant on upgrading your eagle warriors and using them mm -hmm. to counter uh to, to counter other swordsmen and so that way you know kind of like how the mayans like you know their two-handed swordsmen like you know are not the best right? right i think you'd have to i think you'd have to treat the civilization in a similar way yeah i like it yeah good all right, let's see. Uh, let's do next. We've got the Bantu. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. This one is fascinating to me. Just right out of the gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start the game with a spearman. So I'm, I, as I understand that, mm -hmm. that is instead of a scout. Although that might be in addition to a scout. But I think yeah. it's instead of a scout. Oh, that would be weird. You yeah. start the game with a spearman. Hunted animals last 50% longer. Receive 300 stone in the castle and Imperial Ages. Can train spearmen in the Dark Age. Supplies affect all infantry units. And their team bonus, infantry get plus two line of sight. The unique text we've got here is Zimbabwean Warfare. Rams don't cost gold. 400 food, 300 gold on that one. And the Imperial Age, Calhoun Formation. Militia get plus 40 HP. For 500 food and 700 gold. So before we get to the unique unit and the tech tree, I guess let's just maybe sit there for a second. I think the Civ is fascinating. I just just the idea of losing your scout, you replace it with a spearman. So your ability to it's almost a, a nerf in a lot of ways because you cannot scout out your starting base nearly as effectively. You're not really able to um, scout the map and your opponent nearly as freely so already there's kind of a defensive mindset i think uh that you have to take playing as the uh, the bantu here but uh on the, on the flip side though you get 50 percent more food out of all of your hunted animals deer boar uh, will give you more when you start the game with 300 stone you know one of the things i've learned is the one of the strategies you get up a market in the feudal age you immediately sell off your starting stone and in order to get up to Castle Age as quickly as possible. Well, with the, the Bantu here, you can sell off your 200 stone and then get 300 stone as soon as you hit the Castle Age. Yeah. Right? Um, so that that's wild. Let alone if you actually kept the stone, if you're wanting to do some kind of forward castle or something, uh, you are just that much closer to, to a castle right out of the gate. And the fact that you're able to train spearmen in the Dark Ages means that you are as close to invulnerable... To a scout rush as it gets, I imagine, because you, you cannot be, you know, like I've, I've had games where my opponent gets with the feudal edge faster and they get scouts on me because I was getting greedy and I'm not up to the feudal edge yet, so I can't train the spears and I've got to survive some other way. 
you know. Uh, here, you're able to get spears right out of the gate. Uh, so I think you have that kind of resiliency, and your opponent knows he has to do either some kind of drush or an archer rush in order to do damage. Scouts is just a waste of time, I would think. Um, I, I, I like the idea, and that's uh, there's more I want to talk about, too. Like, the fact that rams don't cost gold, so... Uh, you get very cheap rams. You load them up with spearmen that are cheaper because you get supplies affecting spearmen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So those rams, which already absorb, you know, arrow fire just fine. Well, now it's just that much more effective to load them up with spears. And now they're, uh, again, effectively uh, resilient against cav as well. You have to attack these guys with, with infantry, it seems. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. It, it, ch it changes point. things. Yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead. What do you think? Oh, uh, so just a couple things. One, um, just to return us to the Afghans for a second. Right. Is the siege elephant and the armored elephant? Is the armored elephant an upgrade of the siege? I, I, that's so new. I, I actually don't. Know. I think, and I'm going to check that right now. I think the siege yeah. elephant is the upgrade. Okay, because yeah. if that's the case in the Afghan video, then I think Afghans got armored elephants. So you would still have. You actually do have an alternative. They do. Our armored which, upgrade is the, the tier one. CGI yeah. So, you, so so if you've made it this far into the video, y'all, right? Uh, that's <laughs> amendment number one. I still think that I still think that the idea holds pretty much true. But yeah. um, you know, but <laughs> any of those those guys, any of those, even those uh those armored elephants are still really strong. So um, but this civilization does not get armored elephant. But the other thing about the civilization, I think you're right about the spearmen as a surrogate for the scout line because you m don't make stables with the civilization right mm -hmm. so if you take a look in the tech tree it says oh you're right all yeah the stables are gone so 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 this is a civilization that i think man this is kind of tough i think because like when you think about dark age like this is going to affect you from the very beginning right so this is going to be when when you're playing with this civilization, it's going to be a lot harder to find your sheep. Um, mm -hmm. And that's probably why the infantry have plus two line of sight as a team bonus, mm -hmm. because you've got to be able to, yeah. to, to find your sheep. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, because the thing about infantry, because in DE, right. Tracking, which used to be an upgrade you got at the barracks that gave your infantry two line of sight. It was incorporated into the game, kind of like cartography, where it's just like a free upgrade you get when you, you know, with, with like cartography you get for free when you you get your market up, right? Mm -hmm. And tracking now you get for free once your uh, your your I think swordsmen I think it's for swordsmen only hit the the feudal age, right? Because it used to be something you had to research. Um, I just, I would worry, this feels, I would just worry about finding your sheep because spearmen are not the, the fastest unit. Mm -hmm. um, and and so that, so you could be very susceptible to being yeah. lamed. Right. E even though, right, you have a spearman and, and, and the, so there is this cool idea like we have a spearman to go after a scout, but scouts can just run away. So I think it, once you start getting to, like higher levels and again like you know like yeah i'm kind of in that like i'm kind of in that 1400 range so like you know like probably not in that like higher level of, of player really but i just you know i honestly i mean i think i think anybody who's like you know 1k and above and you know like isn't you know like going after a hot pocket in the oven and it's actually like <laughs> people watching the game play out yeah. i think that they're going to be able to i think they're going to be able to just dodge the the spearman um and Though I, I like the idea of being able to train spearmen in the dark age, especially if you're worried about a scout rush mm -hmm. and getting kind of prepped. I always thought goths should be able to do that personally, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but maybe but that could be a different subject. Um, so yeah, I, I worry about finding a sheep. I worry about the fact that I worry that you won't. Uh, I worry like when I think about as my adversary knows that I'm going to have like you can't lame boar with this sieve. Mm -hmm. Right, because the spearmen aren't going to move fast enough to be able, or will they? I, I don't know. The spearmen don't have that much HP. I don't think they have enough HP to to fight against a boar. I could be wrong about that because mm -hmm. I haven't really had occasion to do it. So, 
I would be really worried there was a new player where a new players often really struggle to find cheap. Oh, that'd be, right. that would be really, really tough. So, um, and so I think maybe you could give infantry even more line of sight if you wanted to, or honestly, you know, you could do something with this civ where like, you know, like Vietnamese can see the enemy town center. You could, if you start off knew, knowing where your sheep are, with this suit, mm. um, then you could send the spearmen there. It's gonna take them a long time to get there because you gotta scout out for your sheep, you gotta scout out for your boar. Like you're yeah. looking for, like you're look, you're look. How many times we've been in Dark Age and you're you've you've got six on sheep and you really need to put the next one on wood, right? But like you haven't found like a good lumber camp, yeah. uh, especially on Arabia yeah. where sometimes you have pawns in the wood lines. Man, right. like that feel that feels like it would be really really frustrating to play with um so th I, I i would think about i like the the concept but i would think about a way to integrate it so that it doesn't punish your scouting and i think anybody who's uh who's watched my channel and my my gameplay uh the gameplay videos i post like i'm I, i'm constantly talking about scouting and right. i think that like exactly. whatever what whatever research whatever technologies that you're researching etc like even though scouting is really difficult to quantify, like scouting is more like scouting is the most valuable thing I think you can do in the game. And so the fact that this like drastically uh, alters that, and I think in a a a handicapped sort of way, I would be really skeptical of um, hunting animals lasting longer. I think is a cool bonus. I, I don't know about fifty percent, um, you know. But again, I, I like the spirit of it, and I think you just modify the number. Um, Receiving stone is, man, like I could see like castle, like super fast castle drops on arena yeah. with this sieve. Yeah. Um, that could be, that could be kind of brutal. And the really strong infantry could, I mean, this, I don't think this sieve gets bombard cannon, um, but maybe the civilization could be kind of a, it could have an arena feel with the rams that don't cost gold. Um, and and just a really strong infantry, uh, I could see some some arena action here. Um, supplies affecting all infantry units. I've got a is... note on that here. Uh, just yeah, to jump go ahead, on this. so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. so just as comparison note, goth infantry are 20, 25, 30, and thirty five percent cheaper through the ages, uh -huh. right? Right. Uh, supplies would take off fifteen food, so right. they dropped down to thirty five food, which is forty three percent of their food cost. Okay. So forty three percent. So it's kind of like cutting it in half. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and supplies is cheaper now too. So it's not like it's like mm -hmm. not like it's difficult to get. Now you always got to factor in with the civilization though is that you don't have any cavalry. Right. Um, and it looks like you don't get cavalry archers or hand cannoneers. You get, you do get arbalists with racer so you know mm -hmm. like hmm. yeah so i and the reason I'm, I'm sort of sorting out all this is that what i'm asking myself is because the thing about goths is that your late game comp with goths for your power units you really only have long swordsmen and huskarls for your power unit mm -hmm. right your trash units i think you can you know, like mixing in hussars is you know probably a a low key move that's pretty decent with goths. You know, you do have like hand cannoneers. Like you have some units that people forget about, but for the unit that you're usually building your strategy around, it kind of has to be uh, the the infantry line. Mm. And I guess I'm just wondering, the civilization like has kind of a like a goth feel to me, but. But I'm, I'm just asking myself right now, like, is it limited in the same way that goths are? Or does it, or is it limited more like the American civs are, where it's like, you know, you can play like archers and infantry, right? Right, um, right. Uh, that's, that's a tough one, I think. Um, this is a civ that I find really fascinating because, uh, as I understand it, you're really starting the game off um, hampered. There's, it's, you're kind of nerfed yeah. here. Uh, yeah. you, you have some strong eco bonuses if you can take advantage of them, like the 50% longer hunt. 
the stone, once you hit the castle age, things start switching around. But early on, you've got the spearmen. They move slower. I'm The line of sight bonus helps, but I'm guessing that the scout is still overall a more effective scout. So you're having a yeah. harder time finding your early resources. You're, you're playing from behind early on. Yeah. And I think that that opens up uh, your opponent yes. to do different things like whether they, he realizes, hey, I cannot possibly get um, lamed. So maybe I'm the one that can yeah. go and do the laming. You know, there's, there's, there's this extra ability there to do that. Um, I, I know the Bantu here are essentially the spearmen sieve. So I need to go yeah. infantry. I need to go archers. Uh, there are a lot of... You're, you're, there's a, a really big weakness here for the Bantu. But if you survive that, there's some really strong bonuses that kick in around the castle age, the trash rams, the again, the, the, the 300 stone uh, means that you can drop a castle almost immediately. Um, or, again, yeah, I, yeah, sell, sell the stone to a lot of gold. Yeah. Mm. I just kind of feel like, I mean, I feel like trash rams are trash, but in the bad way of trash. Like, battering rams in castle age are, like, and I think, I think it's a meme on Harris channel here. Shout out to him. But, like, it's true, man. Like, battering rams are just... Yeah, they they just get broken down so easily, and so I almost I almost feel like that you know the Castle Age tech, it's like a siren song, right? Where right. you know like right. you want to like you want to because because you're still going to be investing, even if you didn't add wood onto this. And most of the tech, a lot of the techs, you know, like we think Commander and right adds wood cross on the wood it would cost onto crossbows. But let's just assume for the moment that it doesn't. Like you still have rams. It's like there are less a lot of wood. To invest in a unit that's extremely situational, mm -hmm. you have to have a castle up to get it, and you got to pay four hundred food, three hundred gold, to get a unit that's extremely situational. Um, but the thing about this is, I just really worry about getting out of feudal age because, like, if I open archers with this sieve, let's just say, right, mm -hmm. and then my opponent goes skirmishers, what do I make? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you, you got like, infantry. That's it. Even even spearmen like take bonus right. damage skirms. So like the unit that you would normally make, like the stable, like the scout, right? You've replaced the scout with a unit that takes bonus damage mm -hmm. from the unit mm -hmm. that you would usually make the scout to counter. Um and so may and so maybe that's something like I think you'd have to you've got to figure out something with that because I don't know I don't know how you fight against skirms in the feudal age with the civilization if you can't because again what do the american civs do they make eagles right 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 and so that's how american that's how american civs make it through the feudal age and with this civilization i just don't see i don't see how they get out of feudal age ever so i think i think mm. yeah i think this is one where you would need to if you want to have the Civ start with a Spearman, how do you... Like, what do you do against Skirmishers in the early game? Um, yeah. You can't go... Because Minute Arms are too slow, because once you get enough Skirms with Fletching, and you can still just kind of, like, walk away from them. Because the, the value of Minute Arms in Feudal Age drops off... Uh, like, it's a pretty steep drop off once you get in the early uh into once you get past early feudal age and that like initial opening um so if they go skirms like you go skirms yourself but i mean like gosh now you're taking into like you're, you know somebody else just goes scouts against you and then you got to make spearmen um but they've already got skirms like a scout skirm just feels like really strong against the civ I wonder if maybe allowing supplies to affect skirms would do anything because because you, you're what, what you're describing is what you're describing is you're forced into a trash comp right you, you right, you're right, the spearman right. sieve you need skirms back them up um, yeah. maybe if it's not as impactful on your economy right. to go skirms and I don't know if that makes maybe the late game no. trash war too strong I mean, yeah or, hmm. if. I don't know. I could. 
I, I could see giving something... I could see helping out the skirmishers in some way. I could see helping out skirms in some way being decent because it's like... So one of the things about Sicilians, right, is that the fact that your skirmishers take less bonus damage and most of the bonus... Most of in a skirm versus skirm fight that yeah. is being bonus done damage, is just yeah. bonus damage, yeah. right? And so, and so that's... So, so Sicilian skirmishers in the early game uh, and even in the mid game, I think, it's always like a massive advantage, right, in those skirm v skirm fights. And so, if you could take that same concept, right, mm -hmm. and I would say apply it to the sieve, so that in skirm v skirm fights, then you could prevail. So, like, you know, like the Dravidian uh, faster attacking skirmisher bonus, like which is like, I think is, is like really strong yeah. in in feudal age, um, and. But, and again, and that's another civilization where you're often like, man, I don't want to make, like, I'm really nervous about, you know, making too many scouts. Though, again, I think in Feudal Age, you know, it's not that big of a deal with that. So, um, I make scouts with Dravidians all the time, personally. But, mm -hmm. but if you don't have scouts at all, you have to be able to win that Skirm v. Skirm war. So maybe there's something, and there's like, and there's enough bonuses here. Like, maybe, I, maybe sub out the the 300 stone in castle and imperial age yeah. right and give them a give them some because because i'm asking i'm trying to ask myself what what that helps them like what that what what that helps them do particularly right um other than like i mean arena maybe like fast castle drops i could see it um, you know, if you wanted to like stonewall your base. So like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, I, I think it's a bonus for utility. And, and I guess maybe what he has in mind too is, because again, I, I think the idea of the Civ is you're supposed to start out very defensively minded. Uh, you just don't have the flexibility to go on the offense um, early on very effectively. Uh, I mean, I guess you could try to rush or something. But anyway, if you're worried about archers, maybe the thought process, process is you go into watchtowers. And the 300 stone and castle and imp means that, you know, using up that early stone to defend from archers. Punish you? Exactly. You're not, you're not being punished nearly as badly because you've got the stone coming in uh, once you hit the castle age. Mm, yeah. That's a, I mean, that's an interesting point, I think. Um, though, Oh man, I, I think I think that creating a sieve though that an early game is just like I mean purely defensive mm -hmm. is I, I mean we just haven't really seen a civilization like that before. And in, and in RTS games generally, play. yeah, right, the tempo and tip typically yeah. the guy that throws the first punch uh, is the one who's more likely to win. So. Uh, if it is a pure defensive sieve, that's that's tough to balance well. I think, I think that that's right. I mean, because it's like, yeah, I, I think that's right. Because if you if you can't go scouts to counter skirms, and you know, the, and the um, the other player is going like scout skirm, I just feel like, you know, unless unless if scout scout skirm isn't going to be countered that hard by watchtowers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because you know you could probably sit under watchtowers with skirmishers because they have so much pierce armor, and scouts you can kind of run around watchtowers because again there's no ballistics right. and you have two base pierce armor anyways. So you know it's not like watchtowers are going to be the greatest counter. I do kind of see like and yeah and the pro and you might think well maybe you could. I mean okay here's a suggestion. I don't know, look, tell me what you think about this though. But what if you could make stone walls in dark age? Ooh. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because okay. if you really wanted to play super defensively, and, yeah. that's how, and that was like the identity of the Civ, I mean, it's one thing to wall up with Palisade walls. It's another mm. thing to be yeah. able to get your walls up with stone walls. Yeah. I that like that. That would be hard to punish. That would be hard to punish. Yeah. Um, you know... Again, now, it but might be, say, it yeah. may be like uh, focusing this civilization too much into one strategy, one approach to things. But I like the idea. 
yeah. but yeah and maybe and maybe even this would be because I, I like to think about uh opportunities to integrate like cool things in like the scenario editor or mm -hmm. something that maybe would be having the game and what if right uh the civilization right maybe instead of being able to build stone walls in dark age what you do is that the civilization can build fortified walls uh, so, <laughs> i like that yeah I mean, yeah now that's a little it would be interesting to compare that to the humans right because the humans right. get more hp yeah. on their palisade walls and i don't know if fortified walls if there's like building armor and like wall armor that's different that's going on behind the scenes but i think the spirit of the idea would be that like if if this civ and it's hard too because like you know there's this walling feels really overpowered mm -hmm. and i feel like it would be hard i mean do, do what do i don't even know what fortified walls do we know what they cost i off the top of my head no i mean we don't is there no we can't but you can't build them and i don't know yeah not knowing what they cost is is kind of tricky but the thing about it like walling so overpowered that I, you you have to make the investment really mm -hmm. costly for it to be balanced right. and um and i don't know i kind of think anything that in general encourages civilizations to just like you know like like to to, to turtle up and be like agoraphobic right, is right. just like it's just I, I don't i'm not sure i i feel like that could be I mean, even forget about balance. It just like might not be that much fun to play, mm -hmm. and so, and and I'm not sure that's the way. I mean, because a lot of things we see in the game now, with like Empire Wars and the whole like nine bill start thing, a lot of people are trying to find ways to speed the game up. Yeah, and yeah, and <laughs> it seems like that the 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 sort of the flavor of the Civ is almost like trying to slow games down. Exactly, and yeah. like the, the the strategist in me. Is kind of like, hmm, how does that work? But then, like the 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 guy who's like, you know, gets home, you know, and maybe only has time to play a couple of games a day, and I run right. into, you know, the Bantu, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know this, I know this game is going to take forever. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. even, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do this. So it's yeah. So I could, I, I think I see it from both perspectives. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do like though this idea of trying to experiment with having a non-american sieve that doesn't get staples that's that's yeah. that's a cool that's a cool concept and so but but I, I think you have to solve you have to solve like well you know whatever the eagle warrior solves for mm -hmm. a sieve i think the bantu has to have a solution yeah yeah i like it so uh for me and I, we haven't even talked about the unique unit but i don't know I don't know how much, for the sake of time, I don't know how much there is to talk about the Asagai Spearman. Uh, it's an armored gold version of the Spearman. It's a fast anti-cab yeah. infantry with good armor. Does bonus damage to the usual suspects, but also against buildings. Um, it has a 1.2 yeah. move speed, so I guess it moves faster than uh, yeah. your typical Spearman. Uh, the... the yeah. Once again, I, in my in my view, the Civ is pretty good once you get to the Castle Age, but you're just so weak. There's so many areas of vulnerability trying to get up to Castle right. uh, that I, I think this might be the first Civ that we look at that I say maybe is even underpowered. I would agree, actually, yeah. Because this just kind of, the the unique unit just kind of feels like, you know, like a, I don't know, like a like Super Saiyan Halberdier, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I just... You know, like, in a civilization that it looks like already gets Halberdier, mm -hmm. I mean, why? I mean, you don't get champions with this Civ, but, you know, when you have, like, when you have bonus damage against Cavalry, like, I want to make Halberdiers anyways. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm making this unit as a substitute for missing champion, uh, which is fine, then... Why, like, why do I make champions? Well, to fight against trash and to fight against trash busters most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, and this unit's going to die against, you know, any swordsman line. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm just, and it's missing scale barding armor. Is that the, is that the infantry, the last infantry armor? 
Uh, scale barding armor is going to be the... No, that's the tier one uh, cav armor. But the sip doesn't even... Oh, because it just, does... just, it just oh, has the see, cav line. So. I yeah. see, I see, I see. Okay, that's how they do it. Okay. Yeah. So you get all your infantry armor upgrades. Still, though, I just feel like... I feel like the... Or the roll... 30 gold is not cheap. Yeah. Like, most of the... I mean, pretty much that's what the unique infantry units cost. And, that, and to have one that is going to struggle against mm -hmm. the swordsman line and is, you know, honest. I mean, we're doing, you know, it's like, it's just like I'm paying gold for a unit that I can get. looks like about the same, maybe even more mm -hmm. bone, like overall damage against cavalry from a halberdier. I don't know. Yeah. man. And, and like uh, you said yeah. earlier, the game is about numbers and you already have, cheap mm -hmm. thanks to supplies you've got cheaper right. yeah, 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 anyway yeah. so just pure exactly. numbers would would make a difference yeah. there so I, yeah yeah I, although it is worth it is worth noting though with this sieve the imperial age tech gives their their looks like they're two-handed swordsman mm -hmm. uh plus 40 hp yeah so so i guess you can go it's kind of like bulgarians right it's like right. I, I don't know how that how the numbers stack up so mm -hmm. i guess you can go two-handed swordsman with the sieve but but that's like even more a problem for the unique unit because it's like okay so i'm up against trash busters or trash i'm not making this mm -hmm. i'm making two-handed swordsman with plus 40 hp so right. yeah i you know yeah that might be a i i think about some i think you want to make this uh this the the asagai spearman you know if there's something that can be done to give it like more like of a unique identity mm -hmm. um Rather than it's kind of like a you know like a fast a fast halberdier, but you know you gotta I mean seventy food even yeah. is a lot to pay, um, and so like maybe start with a unit like uh, uh, the Kamiuk, right, and 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 build around from there, right, and see yeah. like well the Kamiuk you know the Kamiuk gets some run even though you have halberdiers, so what can I do? you know, from maybe like that as a template, what can I modify to make something that, you know, there would be a reason to actually uh, to create. Yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah, so for me, I'd probably give it a, maybe a three on the flavor department and maybe a yeah. two for the, the OP. Yeah. It feels, things. yeah, it feels, I'd, I'd give it a one. I feel, it, to yeah. me, it feels really, it feels really underpowered. Like it would be, you know, we talk about mid elo players a lot, and like mm -hmm. I would just say, you know, don't ever play this. So if I was a mid, -E <laughs> if, if I was if I was a mid elo player, yeah. because like mid elo players, like you know, like we still struggle with so many basic things, right? And getting information is so huge. Exactly, and that'd be that'd be tough. To, that's yeah, tough stuff. I'll say one more thing before I move on. You know what? There's a there's a bonus that I think is probably too strong to put onto a vanilla sieve. But might be really fun for the Bantu here, is um, giving your sheep the ability to convert neutral sheep. Oh. I, I've always wanted to be able to do that, and, and I yeah. think that a sieve like this, where you're not able to scout so much of the map, yeah, just to give yourself empowered sheep like that would no, be really no, cool. No. And, and, that, and that's dude, that's a really great idea because. Now it's like with and, and the thing the thing I really like about that idea is this is a trade off to it too, mm -hmm. because the trade off with running around like with scouting with your sheep for too long is that if your opponent's going forward right. you could lose that sheep, and so, you know, here on, on the one hand maybe you could find your sheep quicker, and maybe even you could send your spearman forward, right? Uh, but that would be that would be a really a really nice solution, and honestly I still think if you paired it with even seeing where your sheep start mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that doesn't sound that doesn't sound like it would be overpowered yeah given that you have like zero mobility with this <laughs> yeah yeah that'd be pretty cool all right listen, i don't know how much time you've got um i'm thinking maybe I mean, let's go to maybe the georgians and, and then we'll, we'll maybe okay. call it like a part one or something maybe we can come yeah, back let's to do this. It. yeah 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 let's do it uh, right. yeah i'm yeah, I'm happy to come back. It was a lot of fun, so let's do it. Yeah, cool.
Cool. Uh, not to, awesome. not to, yeah, not to push you right into a, a part two or anything uh, off the cuff. But, uh, no, yeah. no, this is fun. This is fun yeah. So, All so right. we're going to Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do the Caribs next. Uh, oh, the Caribs. Next. The Caribs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Uh, the, the Caribbean civilization here. Civ bonus. You start the game with an Eagle Scout. The plantation becomes available oh, for construction okay, in the feudal okay. age. Which, if we if we skip ahead here, the plantation it costs two hundred wood, and it generates wood equal to three villagers. Hmm. So I've I've got some notes on that. Uh, lumberjacks. I'm assuming these are lumberjacks that are not upgraded with anything. Lumberjacks gather twenty three wood per minute. So I estimate it takes about nine minutes for the plantation to return its investment. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. The crossbow and arbalest upgrades are free. Yo. Yeah. The galley line has plus two, plus four, plus eight attack versus buildings in the feudal mm. castle and imperial age. Fishing ships have plus two line of sight. Their castle age unique tech, Thunderbirds. Eagle warriors move 10% faster. And their imperial age tech, Fanaticism. Eagle warriors and blow gunners attack 30% faster. Uh, they're unique units. I've already mentioned the plantation. Canoe. That's so dope. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got the canoe. Oh, cool. Scouting boat. Yeah. No attack, but large line of sight. Created from the dock mm-hmm. in the Dark Age. The blow gunner. A mobile high-ranged... Uh, a mobile high-attack ranged unit. All right. So, what do you think? I think it's... Really interesting civilization. I think there's a lot of cool things about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like when I think about the thing that I that that's really interesting about this civilization is that I can see I can see this playing out really being kind of like a hybrid uh, hybrid map civ. Right. And so some of those like really like I can see because. And a lot of tournaments now, like you see a lot of like hybrid maps, like a lot of the hidden cup maps are hybrid, for instance, you know, you know, we haven't had that tournament in a while, but like, I think you, I think that theme of hybrid maps is really out there. Um, and so that's where, like, when I think about where like the galley line attack versus buildings, like at first blush, I go like, well, you know, like how often am I really attacking buildings, but except for like dogs. And so that's where I think that like, Mm-hmm. You could probably just like it's basically like you know like the you put a bunch of Saracen archers in a galley yeah and yeah. like that's except except you get even more uh, attack which I you know which is like you'll just be like this civ could be like baller mm-hmm. on the water um right. it'd be interesting to see I'm just kind of scrolling oh the tech tree is some like link that and so we don't really have the tech tree here but um. Assuming you get Bracer, I could see this in that islands, mm-hmm. and you run out of wood. Like, if you build plantations, you don't run out of wood. Right. And then your galley line is going to be able to wreck enemy docks. Man, like, that could be really strong. Um, and I like the idea of having more water maps. So this might be a civilization that's just strong on water maps in general. I'm just checking the blacksmith right here. It looks like yeah. you do get bracer. You, you have a yeah. you have a full blacksmith tech other than the All right. the yeah. cav. You don't get cav. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree with your your reasoning here. Definitely a very strong hybrid map civ. Um, one of these civs where I, I think it's true for many civs that have uh, naval bonuses. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the Caribbeans here, the Caribs, uh, the, the galley line having a plus. Uh, additional attack versus buildings great for knocking somebody off of water um Ooh. and and yeah. if you're playing a map where i'm thinking like migration you know a map where you, you have a lot of buildings mm-hmm. off the coast yeah, um exactly tr- kind of transforming that that naval supremacy into significant land damage uh, i think right. that that makes them pretty strong in that I- one thing it looks like about the plantation just kind of scrolling down to it is mm-hmm. that there's a build limit of only you can only it looks i understand this looking at this now you can only have three mm-hmm. in imp. per per imp so yeah. that means basically it's like you can have like nine extra on nine, nine extra uh bills on wood right um 
but by imp though if you have all of your like lumberjack upgrades and stuff like that might be enough though to i still think it's a really strong bonus for late game water fights um and, and this is the other thing about that galley line having extra attack right is that you know being able to destroy buildings from like a distance as opposed to like doing it with like fire ships that need you know that get up close that's pretty strong to me um and so this is a this is a sieve that would be really deadly on the water for sure um so i, I like the team bonus too fishing ships have two line of sight um that's good you know that will uh I, because that's good you know because like for instance on on nomad a lot of times right like you right. might you might make an extra fishing ship just to scout around and look for enemy docks and so being able to well team not on nomad, not with this sieve you've got the canoe <laughs> yeah not with this sieve, but it's the team bonus yeah, right yeah. so all your buddies so like you know i mean yeah like you gosh you're gonna but like you're gonna want to play for water with right. this sieve. but you know you're a you know your your buddies can't make the canoe, but you can. But hey, they can build a fishing ship, mm -hmm. um, and go run around. Um, on on the canoe, I almost feel like like it's cute, mm -hmm. but I almost feel like it needs it needs something else. Um, yeah, because I just go like it feels like a unique unit that I would only make for this one purpose and i could and it's basically like i'm saving like what is it like 20 wood for doing what a fishing ship would do otherwise yeah, like, especially I mean, with your fishing not ship as, more line of sight yeah yeah that's true too right and, mm. and not as well obviously because you know like this costs less wood so mm. i think the canoe i think the canoe's a a little under powered um especially if it's on a map like nomad or something are you really going to invest right. you know the, the dock time and the wood early on to get out a canoe instead of a fishing ship yeah yeah because at least if you make a fishing ship right like you know you could get some production out of it mm -hmm. and then go from like okay well you know i'll have like six maybe six fishing ships on uh on like deep sea fish all right, let me just send one, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and it's it's helped your eco a bit. So I think the canoe is a is a little underpowered, and so I think I would I would think about a way that the what I would think about with the unit is how can I make this so that we see canoes in the feudal age or the castle age or imperial age, just in, in some of the other ages even, because there's just no there's just no point outside of it other than this like one like very narrowly defined mission. Um, All right, let me, let me throw this at you. Let me, yeah, let me yeah, see what you think yeah. about this. What if the canoe upgraded into Ooh. a transport ship? Yeah. Or, some, or something like that, or it's where, you know, it, uh, uh, or you give it, it the... Put it into a kayak. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Into a kayak. Exactly, so, you know, it, it yeah. gives you some flexibility, again, on a migration-like map to be able to... Uh, settle different parts of the map more effectively than other civs maybe could. Or how how about this? What if a canoe has like a transport population of one? Yeah, I, you know, like yeah, yeah, and it's like it's like this, yeah, it's it's like it's like the camel scout of transport ships. Right. Right. Uh, I could I could I could see that though. You can get transport ships in the dark age, so. Uh, that's, that's a I don't point. know. I, I, yeah, I. I mean, I feel like that's. I feel like that's on the right track, though. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. Well, yeah. I'm because I'm just trying to think. Like, it just it, it just feels like is there something other than being able to like do damage that could make this unit. Like worth, like worth making, you know. Right. Um. And because, uh, like, we are because the thing, right? Like, the bal the water balance in terms of units. Like, we already have like the water balance triangle. Mm. Like demo ships, counter fires, and fires. Like, 
sort of count I mean, like sort of counter galleys you know depending on the number of galleys i guess and then galleys counter demos so we already have this water triangle so and i think that you know that water balance is pretty important so how do we introduce a unique unit that doesn't affect that balance mm -hmm. but also but that also provides a a unique mission right um and that would be, and especially when it's something as like, you know, as milk toast as a canoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, or like, you know, cause I love the idea of having a canoe. Like that's like, I think. Thematically, the, flavorly, excellent. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the unit is right. And, you know, and so I'm, look, I'm looking at the, the sort of description of this sieve and it's like, you know, the Caribous must defend their island paradises from new arrivals and rising powers to seek to claim it for themselves. So I could see the canoe maybe being some kind of, if it was some kind of defensive weapon, maybe. Um, I don't know. I think that's a tough one. So it's it's a unit that's worth having, though, I think. Mm -hmm. But just kind of, just kind of, just you know, it, it it needs to to invest in it. I think it needs uh, a you know, it's the temporal scope of its mission at a minimum. Like it can't just mm -hmm. be a unit you just make in Dark Age, you know, so you save twenty wood. Like, right. That you, we we got to get more than that. And I also think, and so I think to give it more of a its its utility. A longer time horizon then i think what i think what you got to do is you need to give it you have to give it something something in terms of like its performance uh mm -hmm. specifications that let it do something else so um i don't know like I, so like one thing maybe you could you could maybe try and mess with like the attack bonuses or the hidden armor maybe um i'm not sure how though like yeah like i'm thinking like i'm thinking like so you know because i'm just thinking that like fire galleys like so like why do fire galleys counter galleys right right you know it's kind of it's because they can like close distances because they have a bit more speed and i think that they have higher pierce armor or some, something like mm -hmm. that right if you could make a if you could make a canoe maybe some like budget version with that and maybe you don't get fire galleys or something yeah and so it's kind of like a melee combat unit mm -hmm. but it just kind of has a different flavor um, i like that idea yeah yeah like like maybe if, if if the unit's a substitute for something else that's not in their tech tree yeah that, that could work i think um and it wouldn't even, and then it wouldn't even be that, you know, bothersome if, like, maybe at some point in the ages it becomes, you know, obsolete, and you'd rather just make galleys and like right. canoe is just kind of like, you know, to, you know, to tide you over and like kind of help and in a way, right? That like, like Vikings missed the whole fire right. galley line, right, right, and it's a limitation of their tech, tech tree, and maybe like you know, the Caros would be something to where it's like, well. You know, you have maybe this like a really strong option to help you get through feudal age, fitting with that theme, right? Of like helping you defend, but then at some point you need to transition right. to your uh, like you you can't you can't invest in them forever mm -hmm. because maybe they'll 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 die too hard to like like uh, to to fire ships yeah. or or maybe even so, like other like but more mm, let's just say like you know like. You know, modern units, so to speak. Right. Modern in the context of you know, Age of Empires. Great, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Good, um, good. I mean, the big thing though, like crossbow and arbalist being free. That's that's got to be huge. Like, I mean, we just like up the cost on on them. I mean, granted, right. I know it doesn't look like you're getting knights with this too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think honestly, like, I mean, the resources are a big deal because you know, like. Now, since every Civ is paying more mm -hmm. for their crossbows and arbalists, like, man, to pay, like, free, it makes it just that much better of a bonus. But to me, it's the immediacy of the upgrade. Right. Right. Um, 
that's a like that's a power spike that um man like you you could really you could really obliterate some some sibs with that um so i don't know like I, I would be concerned that that is a little too strong because I'm imagining uh, what if this is Arabia, right? So we'll take all the yeah. the water stuff away. Um, but you go for an archer rush, you're you're successful, you're starting to put pressure on, and then you get up to Castlage and immediately your your archer ball crossbows, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, that's that's really 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 strong. Yeah, that's yeah that's pretty wild. Um. So I would, and then Arbalest on top of that too. One, yeah, yeah, I know that's the thing with Bracer on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, I mean, you know, you you, you probably need Arbalest with Bracer with uh, a sieve that that lacks stables, but boy, you know, the the, the you would have just insane power spikes, and mm -hmm. uh, and and that could get that get pretty tricky, I think. Um. And just like kind of like looking at their unique techs, the Eagle Warriors. Yeah, move I mean, faster think, and attack faster. I think Inca Eagle Warriors, that used to be their tech. I think yeah. they moved faster. So mm -hmm. that seems like something we've seen before. Probably is, I can't remember if it was strong or not, but it seems reasonable. Um, hacking faster is. Hacking faster is. Is is interesting yeah i kind of like that too though i don't know if you combine it though with moving faster and attacking faster i wonder if that makes eagles too strong in late game i don't know i think it's interesting i guess it, i think it makes them even better at what they're good at um if i remember right again we have aztec inca and maya all three of the civs currently their unique techs make their eagle warriors more uh Kind of sturdier in some way or another. No, yeah. no, the, no, the Aztec have more attack, but the, the Inca and the Maya uh, give them more HP or more armor here. So the, the, I think that's a little bit more of a glass cannon, but. Dude, we gotta talk about this blow gunner, man. Like, it looks like it, it, it looks like it blows. Uh, but, I'm, <laughs> but. The thing about it, it has like really some really interesting characteristics where mm -hmm. classified as an eagle warrior for one, mm -hmm. right? So I assume like that means 30, that the like, unique techs work for the blowgunner too. I uh, yeah, I mean at least like well that's weird because it specifies right blowgunners and eagle warriors with one and doesn't for the other. So I, I what you're saying does sound right, and mm -hmm. so. That's something I think that the designers would want to clarify. Um, but like, it's like 30 to 40% accurate at four range. Like that's mm -hmm. terrible. But if you look down, like it's invisible on the mini map. Yep. Yep. That's interesting. Um, I don't know. Cause on the one hand, on the one hand, I think like, well, how often do I use the mini map to you know to look for units and it's like kind of a lot right because right. when you get attacked right. when you hear the attack notification like you look over to the mini map to see where it's happening and so but but that's but i'm not sure that's what it says though right because it sounds like it's invisible on the mini map so if it's not attacking then and you're looking at the mini map to see if it's there you're not going to see it but presumably if your units are still being attacked by it yeah you'll still get the notification so that's why i'm thinking that like that i'm not sure i'm not sure how strong how strong i'm trying to think of so i'm trying to think of how often i'm looking at the mini map and I see units on the mini map that are kind of like just, you know, that are kind of passing and I go over there and right. it does happen. Right. It definitely happens. But, but does it happen? Well, it's, it's yeah, definitely the idea like, is well, like you have, you as a player have to be on alert. You can't use the mini map because right. it's, 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 you're not, you're not going to know until they're on top of you, you know? Right. If, yeah. If, if and I like that a lot. I like yeah. that a lot. Like, I think actually that's a really it, it's 
it's so it's so unique that it's hard for me to to like to understand how it would play out like right. iteratively right. you know right. it's hard to evaluate the strength of it but just like kind of i feel like it could be a really strong bonus and mm -hmm. i think it would be oh my gosh like if you're a I feel like it would be a really rage inducing bonus. Like if you're playing <laughs> against the Civ and you're like, where am I? Like, you're just like, where are they? And like, you're just like, oh man, you'll be like, I feel like there will be a, a, like this, like this bonus could be. Maybe. Could be a, yeah. Maybe that's what you do. will go up. Yeah. Maybe that's what you do with the canoe. Maybe you, maybe you give the canoe like, you know, oh, is it something like that or uh, yeah so something like that you give it like a little bit of a transport yeah. and then it's invisible and so that way on kind of an islands thing you can sneak yeah. people i don't know yeah yeah no there is something to that like maybe like somehow it you know like you could do it to where like you know in order in order to see the canoe you have to be like right on top of it right or something right so, so like even if you have the line of sight like with canoes they're invisible until they're within a certain radius, mm -hmm. right? So that would be a good thing. That would be a good thing to do with canoe. Though, even then, like when I think about the canoe, it's like if I see like an enemy scouting me with the canoe, I go like, all right, they're scouting me. Like I kind of expected that, right? You know, that they would be like, like even if I didn't see an like an enemy like fishing ship scouting me. I mean, I'm just going to assume it, you know, mm -hmm. for, for the most part and, uh, and just kind of, you know, so yeah, I don't know. Like it's, yeah, yeah the canoes, it was cool. I think this blow gunner unit is cool in a way. Yeah. Um, because like, I mean, it's kind of costly, 50 wood, 40 gold, some good damage, short range. It can't hit the broadside of a barn, but, <laughs> but like, but the barn won't see it coming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the barn, but the barn won't see it coming. So it's just like, yo, that's not bad, man. I that's so that's so unique. That's one of the that's one of the coolest. Yeah. Uh, I think that's one of the coolest, most unique, unique uh, bonuses, like unique units so far in mm -hmm. in this mod. And uh, I can see, yeah, I I would be just like, oh, I'd be going crazy fighting against these blow gunners, but. That's that's you know the game should be difficult. So, so let me ask you these final two questions on this sieve. Yeah, yeah, One, yeah. crossbow and arbalest upgrade is free. Just looking at that, we're we're playing on Arabia here. Is that bonus too strong, or because you're losing maybe all of these other bonuses that don't get you know put in? Uh, do do you think that's balanced? Does that fit? And then two, for plantations, uh, it's kind of like mini fatorias you know, for wood, does that make the carob sort of a nightmare on an island sort of situation, uh, you know, in, in a late game? Kind of like where we, we've seen on some of these island maps w against the Portuguese where uh, it becomes a defensive turtley kind of game. You just stall yeah. out your opponent. They, they lose all their resources and, you know, you win off of your Feitoria. Do you think something like that could happen in Plantation? So starting with the crossbow and arbalist free upgrade first, I think that the argument for this that we have to keep in mind is like this is a water sieve mm -hmm. that really doesn't have a dark age eco bonus right and honestly like other than the plantation which is as you mentioned right it's gonna take it's at, like nine minutes at, to pay at back. least nine minutes yeah so if you invested the 200 wood and you get it in feudal age so let's just say you go up at like 22 pop and you're just like you know what the first thing i want to put down is a plantation mm -hmm. like you're gonna be i mean unless you're you know you're gonna be probably close to transitioning to castle age by the time it's paid off and wood is so valuable in the early game mm -hmm. that like i don't know like it's 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 a big investment to make for the early game and like the payoffs i think come a lot later all of which is to say that you know the crossbow arbalist upgrades being free you're not getting a lot of other bonuses with this sim and so maybe because you're not getting a lot of bonuses it's like from a resource perspective like right. let me right. say it a different way right. i think from a resource perspective i think there's an argument that because you don't really 
you know, your economy is pretty bad with this sieve, mm -hmm. then if you're going down this line, then, you know, you need some savings. Um, you know, but on the other hand, it, it just like, it can just snowball so fast, right? So imagine, right, you know, like you're, you're, you're archer microing and your opponent like gets to castle age, right? And you didn't expect it. And now they have crossbows and you still have archers. And so they're going to get for free an extra attack, an extra range, and a little more HP. Like, like your archers, whatever archers you have in that engagement are dead. And if that's your mm -hmm. whole army, then you're in a world of trouble. GG right there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're not going to... And if that's what happens to you, then you're not going to be able to make elite skirmishers because you still mm -hmm. might be on the way up. And so that can snowball really fast. Um, so... You know, uh, it's 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 really tricky. Um, if I were going to to, hmm, I'm just thinking like if I were going to recommend something to replace that, I've always thought that a bonus in the game that I would like to see is that archery range technologies have a discount mm. uh, because we see it with you know like Dravidians, mm. um, you know, and we see. Stable Tech's having a discount with uh, um, uh, Burgundians, right? So we see it Slavs with the Siege Workshop. So we see it with a lot of other buildings, but we don't see it at the archery range. I do think, though, that that bonus would be kind of wasted on this too, mm -hmm. because, you know, what are the tech, what are you, you know, I would rather see that bonus for a sieve that has like cav archers and parthian tactics right. just because like cav archers right. are so hard to upgrade i think that's where it would really help a sieve so i think that that bonus would be wasted on a sieve like that but you know maybe yeah maybe maybe something though that that where the power spike just isn't so immediate but that you can still get the same resource savings mm -hmm. um and also thinking about it too, like from this civilization that I think has a defensive perspective, then you know what? Like that's like if it could be something defensive, um, uh, maybe, maybe that's something to think about. I don't know. There's there's something, but I do think that there's you know you need something with the sieve because your eco is not going to be that good. Now when it comes to the plantation, like I think it would be strong on on water for sure um especially if you have some of these early because it's not nearly as much investment as a fatoria um but i think the fatoria is also giving you a lot more resources and the thing about the fatoria that i think we have to keep in mind is that the fatoria because it's also generating stone and gold you can sell those resources at bottomed out market mm. prices because right because people have been like mm -hmm. selling wood the whole game right right but what you can do is since now you have an infinite supply of like stone and gold like now you can like sell those and like potentially right. like, buy back a lot of wood because like the prices are inverted and right so like wood is really it's not very valuable um you know because like gold is really valuable though on island maps sometimes when wood gets scarce right you have to buy so much of it and so but the thing with like but the point though i think is that the fatoria is almost a way that you can use it to deal with the fluctuations in the market. And that's, and so that gives the Fatoria, I think, a really powerful advantage. Mm -hmm. Whereas a plantation, you know, you can sell the wood for gold. And in late game, wood can get really expensive on island maps. So, mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't knock that. Um, so, but, but I don't. As of right now, I don't see it being stronger than Fatorius. It might, I mean, honestly, it might just be kind of balanced. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's always hard to say until you yeah. see it in practice. Yeah. But but it doesn't seem like, just from like first blush, right? It doesn't seem immediately overpowered. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I just have so, one random so, thought. I have one so random good. thought. The canoe, yeah. what if the canoe was a mobile drop-off point for fishing ships? mobile so like you could like like, like it's like it's kind of like a mobile dock for the purposes of your fishing ship can like drop off food at the canoe yeah mm -hmm. oh i see what you mean yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah that would be and that would be a good eco bonus i mean what if 
like what yeah that would be a good eco bonus too like or maybe like uh yeah dude that would be really dope actually because you know what the no that's a great idea because you know how many times are you playing water and you start making farms mm -hmm. because there's a bunch of fish like out in like the deep deep water but right. it's so far to get to them right and so and yeah the canoe and maybe the canoe like i'm not sure i'd make it a mobile drop off i mean i don't know how the pathing would work mm -hmm. to it but if like maybe like the canoe could be something that could kind of like you could you know be kind of like the middleman right or like the fishing ship goes out to the canoe and then the canoe goes to the dock and then the canoe like maybe comes back or something um i don't know i, I mean i think either way yeah like i think that that would that would be a good problem for a civilization to address and and there would also be a bit of a trade-off too right because you know you'd have to think about if you're going to invest in a maritime economy how do you keep it safe right right and so that and so it would so it's just when you're playing the civ and you're thinking like man you know like if you've really won the water you're like dude just like you know you know canoes everywhere right right <laughs> but but if but if you haven't won the water then like you know you really you can't really like go into that and so or or if you do you're taking a much bigger risk right so right you know and the fishing bonus line of sight would help would help see yeah. the canoe yeah and that's so it, it for the civ it has that idea has a lot of synergy to it so yeah. that's a good one yeah huh? this is a cool civ I, I like the civ a lot yeah so maybe i'd peg it at uh maybe a perfect three on the op meter mm -hmm. um yeah if, if anything i'd be a little worried about the crossbow upgrade but i, I yeah. think you're right i think because there's nothing else for that early eco early situation it 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 balances itself out and then yeah, flavor yeah. i think it's pretty flavorful i'd give it a four. Oh yeah it's yeah it's yeah it's like a conditional three but mm -hmm. the flavor of this sieve is 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 really cool i mean the only thing i would say is i think that the i think the eagle warriors like could be more interesting mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i mean honestly like I, if i think if you wanted to make the eagle warriors more interesting um we haven't had an eagle sieve have a cost discount yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so you know maybe maybe something that you know helps you keep making eagles and i'm not and that doesn't necessarily need to be something like you know like eagle warriors cost minus 25 percent, but maybe something like you know e like dead eagle warriors refund some of their costs right. or maybe right, right do it something like the Keshit, Ooh. or like Eagle Warriors like generate that. gold when yeah. they attack. And so, right now, you have this trade off. Yeah. It's like, well, you kind of like, you know, you got to sacrifice your Eagle Warriors to get the gold to make more, but you're probably, it's probably not going to be a perfect trade. But hey, you're reliant on gold units anyways. So, yeah. you know, you can do something like that. That, um, that would be, that would be, uh, I think, that would be interesting for the unit. Um, you know, maybe as like in, uh, maybe as, you know, I don't know, maybe as a castle age or an imperial age tech, honestly, I'm not sure how strong it would be. Nice. But. Nice. All right. Cool. Next up, we've got the Dutch. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> they're Civ bonuses. They're actually kind of similar in, in some ways. Um, okay. Civ bonuses. Galleys have plus one attack in the castle age, just all around. Mm -hmm. all right. Infantry armor techs are free. Mm -hmm, fortified mm -hmm. walls are free okay the bakery becomes available Yo! for construction in the feudal god. age oh my god that's awesome and uh, the team bonuses bombard cannons have a minus three minimum range Ooh. castle unique tech sheepswerf i there's no way i'm pronouncing that right sheepswerf team docks oh, work 25 yeah. percent faster uh, Th that's a team bonus oh my goodness uh, and then Imperial Age Bastion. Musketeers can be created from archery ranges. 500 food of Ornid Gold. So the bakery costs 200. It's basically the, the food version of the I plantation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and then they have the Musketeer, which is an anti cavalry hand cannoneer. What? Yeah. So I, I've got some notes on the Musketeer. Uh, compared to the hand cannon, the Musketeer has one less range. 
20, let me see, what does that say here? 20, yeah, 20 damage for Elite. So the Elite Musketeer does 20 damage. That's three more than hand cannons. Um, they are better armored. Two melee armor, three for Elite, and one pierce armor. Versus a hand cannon's zero melee, one pierce armor. So they have all that, but then the hand cannon has their anti-infantry attack bonus. Uh, the musketeer, of course, has the anti-cav attack bonus. So it's kind of a it's, it's a an anti-cavalry version of the hand cannon here. Yeah, but like the elite version does thirty-two damage mm -hmm. against cavalry. Yep. Oh man, that's crazy. Like Genoese crossbows are like really good against cavalry. Mm -hmm. And they're doing like what? Like 14, 15, 16 damage? I mean, I get that maybe they're right. I mean, you know, like the rate of fire is not great on this thing, or maybe the accuracy against either, but um I don't know. I think it It's like a it's like a super janissary or something. Right. <laughs> it's, it's got good all-around uh, stats, uh, and then the anti cap yeah. bonus on top of that. Yeah, that's tr that's that's really really tricky to me. Let's um, let's pause on the musketeer yeah, okay. for a second, let's, and, yeah, and, and let's maybe rewind and just talk about the civ bonuses. I like that. Yeah, I think the civ bonuses are really. Um, Cali said impulse one attack in castle age. Hmm. That feels really strong to me, mm -hmm. um, but the fact that like you know it's not range, I think maybe balances it out. Infantry armor takes free. People have been suge just suggesting this bonus for a sib, I think a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of suggestions for it, and like some people have suggested that like the Javidians should get this bonus if people are trying to buff them. Right, and so that would be. So I yeah I think that that's neat. Um, fortified walls being. These two bonuses, very, again, defensive-oriented, yeah. right? So you get the free fortified walls, yeah. the stone. You're, you're encouraged to go stone wall on them. Infantry armor. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. more damage, yeah. Yeah, so... The bakery, by the way, um, I, I, did, I ran the numbers there. Um, assuming a one-to-one -one food would, right? Uh, it's yeah. going to cost you a little bit more time, maybe about 10 and a half minutes, 11 minutes, in order for the bakery to pay back the investment yeah yeah no that's yeah i think yeah fortified walls i mean the thing about fortified walls is that like hmm, i kind of like fortified like you're you know getting the fortified walls for free mm -hmm. i kind of like that actually um just because like you know that's a tech that doesn't get researched as much but it feels yeah. like really strong mm -hmm. and honestly like if you're if your stone walls are like coming down like you already have lots of problems <laughs> yeah. so so to have some like fortified walls i feel like doesn't make somebody impenetrable mm. it just kind of gives you more time to marshal your forces right. and like push it back i mean that this this sieve i mean with infantry armor techs being free fortified walls like that sounds like this sounds like a pretty wild and the bombard cannon minimum range sounds mm. like it could be a really strong arena sieve yeah um like uh, and it, but it's also kind of a water sieve too, which is fun. Like, um, but yeah, the, the bakery. I don't know what to think about the bakery. Um, you know, I, as much as I like that there's a bakery <laughs> in like your little like Dutch village, that just feels right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but. I'm just not sure what kind of value you're really... And so it's like getting, what, like, you know, like nine on food? Mm -hmm. Which I, I guess theoretically, I'll, yeah. I'll try to make the argument, right? Nine on... Yeah. So you build three bakeries, that's nine vills on food, and that frees up more vills that you can put onto wood or... I know, or, yeah. You know? Yeah. Or invest... I mean, basically, like, nine vills on food... Probably you could run like one stable continuously making light cap. Mm -hmm. um, so basically like three bakeries can run one stable in late game. Mm -hmm. 
for if you're like spamming like cavalry that's not much um i mean i, I what i like about this though is that it's different from like the gurjara sheep bonus and mm -hmm. that the gurjara sheep bonus what you're doing is like it's giving you this big upfront advantage right um and the effect tapers off a bit as you go throughout the game right and so and, and we obviously, like, we see, you know, that's one of the things that I think makes Gajaras pretty strong. So the idea of, like, you know, like the bakery or, you know, as, as like, a, a food-generating unit, the idea that it's, like, over time, it's giving you an advantage is interesting to me. <clears throat> but the truth, though, I think is that, like, probably only half of games go to the distance in imperial mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. and it's an it's a it's a pretty big investment and if you wait to make the investment then you're delaying the benefits of it yeah. and so i just feel like what probably happens more and you can only make one per age anyways so it's not like you can like make three of them and kind of get which again like i can see that being good for balance reasons but it also means that you you recoup the cost of them much more slowly. So it's hard for me to think about what to do with this. Um, and also, this is something we didn't talk about with the uh, the plantation, right? But it would apply the same way. These things take a lot of build time. Yeah, like the bakery takes one hundred and fifty seconds to build. I mean, I don't know like how many villagers that's averaged out to, but like you know. Again, you have to build these things earlier to get the advantage late. So that means you have to devote a lot of build time to get a building up that's going to pay off, you know, when you may already be close to death. Right. Right. So so that's it almost feels like the the cumin feudal TC where you're you're wondering if you even want to take advantage of this building like as soon as as soon as it's available because if if they leave you alone it'll pay off eventually but you you're, you're giving yeah. yourself a vulnerability yeah but the thing about the the second tc though is that a tc is also a defensive structure. That, that's what i'm saying so it's even worse yeah. or even even more vulnerable the bakery is more vulnerable. right right the bakery is yeah 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 exactly exactly yeah the bakery yeah the bakery is not only yeah it's more vulnerable and i mean you know like and it doesn't you know, it doesn't make bills. <laughs> it's not like with a human PC, right? <laughs> so like it's like this is, you know, like it's giving you some gold. Um, but like the human TC is like expanding your eco in like a much more and like a much more and expanding just like the the geography of your base mm -hmm. even in a more profound way because you know you can like you can use it to like hold like key resources, you know, like a, a stone mine or a gold mine. So um so like yeah, so the bakery, you know, uh, is you know, as as quaint as it sounds, it's obviously like uh, it, it feels like, you know, it feels like something that you're just not. There needs to, I think, be some extra incentive to mm -hmm. to invest in it because right because the thing about the the carobs and the plantation, the incentive to invest in it is that on island maps, wood tends to run out, right? Right. Um, and because of, and. And I don't, and, f and food is not nearly as valuable on like a water map. So I don't think that, I don't think that you're getting the same sort of water bonus here, but also like, you know, like, you know, with farms, like I'm usually floating a lot of food in like the late, late game, um, you know, so like, it's, I don't know, like selling food at bottom dot prices, like it's marginal or something. I don't know. It's a really tough one to me. Um, but I want to find a place for it. Right. I I think in the game. I just don't know. Kind of like with the canoe where thematically it's right on point, but yeah, it's kind, just kind, of, kind of figuring like, out yeah, yeah, yeah. how it should look. Like, so when I think about what a bakery does, right? Like, you know, like, you know, you make like confections or something. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like the bakery needs, it does need to produce something um but i just you know maybe you, <laughs> maybe maybe, yeah, yeah. It, maybe it should be like um 
I don't, this is just off the top of my head. This could be dumb, but maybe it's like a like a gold version of a full work where whenever you reseed a farm or something, you get like a little. Like, so it's a replacement to a mill. You reseed the farm and you get like a little tiny bit of gold. Oh, every that's time you an interesting the farm. idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that'd be cool, right? So, like, I mean, that could be real pretty dominant too. If like every time, ah, that'd be interesting. So every time you reseed a farm. Right, you get like you know, you get like a bump in gold or something. Yeah. Now that now that could get that could get pretty strong, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I that's a really interesting idea. Um, I think you would need to, yeah, you would like we would, and that would too. It would make it conceptually distinct from the plantation, which I think is actually kind of fine mm -hmm. the way it is, and and the idea, right, that you know. Like maybe and maybe make it available in you know I don't know you could maybe make it available in, make it available like sometime after feudal age and yeah and it's just like a you know like maybe even say I wonder if you said like like your mills maybe upgrade to bakeries or something mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. um, yeah like, you know, you're, ba you're you're baking bread I'm kind of thinking right with this you know and so like it's like that makes sense that a mill could like automatically upgrade to a bakery and two if you did if you made it upgrade to a bakery in like you know early cat i'm trying to think of like the timings of it because if you're playing something like archers when a lot of times when you're on the way up to castle age you're waiting to reseed farms right so right. you're going to reseed those farms later when you would have the bakery and if you're playing cavalry then you should have horse collar, so you can your farms. You're, they're going to they're going to recede after you already have bakeries. Mm -hmm. So that makes some, yeah. So that makes sense, right? You know, if you if you play the sieves kind of in this meta way, then no matter if you're playing cavalry or archers, you're going to be able to take advantage of the bakery being available uh, in the castle uh, to yeah. give you that little bump. And so that would that would and so when you recede those next farms, right? Then you're gonna get a you know you get a little you take home a little treat, right? That's know. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I like that. No, that's a, that's a, I think that's a great idea. Great idea. And that of course is just them with the musketeer, the the unique unit. So yeah, that you could also create from archery ranges. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, a pretty strong unit. Um, that's a very strong unit, and it's a civilization. I'm looking at the photo of the tech tree. Or you do get arbalist, you do get hand cannons, thumb ring. Um, it looks like you get hussars and cavaliers with, uh, but you miss plus two armor on them, mm -hmm. which which seems right. So, so it's so the thing I like about you know it's a flexible sieve, uh, mm -hmm. and you know not a perfect sieve by any means, but it does feel kind of flexible. Um, I mean, this musketeer is just. It has pretty high melee armor too. The elite version has three melee armor. Yeah. Um, like that's gonna just help it. Like, if cavalry are closing on it, is just gonna help it a lot. Um, and the sieve gets halberdiers as well. So. That's tough, man. I don't know. It's does does the sieve get access to siege engineer? Good question. Um, yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. You know, yeah. if you combine musketeer and hand cannons, and then you get siege engineer, like siege monitor. I'm assuming. Like uh, you just you have answers to everything. It seems like. Yeah, and your bombard cannons are just like. Yeah. I mean, although sometimes that could be a. A curse because bombard cannons can do friendly fire so mm -hmm. you know if you're like if you're if you're bombard cannons being chased by a unit mm -hmm. and you also have like you know say like a knight chasing it mm -hmm. like you're to, you might accidentally kill your knight in the in there so but right. still i think right. it still be really strong this seems to be yeah. another sieve where again it's if you get to the late game it's very strong mm -hmm. between the bakery um or you know, and the musketeer, the hand cannon, the bombard cannon—they just—they're they're very strong late game sieve. Um, can you get there? Because it doesn't give you a lot in the way of you know feudal age 
bonuses. I mean, I just it. I just look at the musketeer and I'm like, what is it bad against? Yeah. Right? Like it's gonna just wreck cavalry. Right. You have like insane damage. The range isn't great, but it's still six range. So mm -hmm. it's not like like bad range. Mm -hmm. Um so I, I just I just feel I feel like the musketeer like the musketeer is such a fun name. I feel like the unit needs something more unique about it than just anti cavalry damage. Like I, I just like there's mm. something you know like maybe make I it don't like know. a maybe make it like an infantry version of a Ratha. You know, it switches between the rapier and the you know, the, Ooh, the gun. yeah. I mean, because that was like the one of the original ideas for I think the right. samurai yeah. was yeah. it would switch between like range and melee. And maybe this is in the same way that like with the Rotha, they're you know they're experimenting with that concept. Mm -hmm. Maybe make the musketeer something that could that could experiment with it because you know like so maybe make maybe make the musketeer so that it's because you get arbalus with the sieve, so mm -hmm. it's not as good. It doesn't fill the same role as an arbalist, right? So mm -hmm. if you go down the arbalist line, you go down that. But but it has this other role where you know it can also because arbalist obviously can't do melee damage. And yeah, you could have you know this unit. It can kind of it's not as good of an archer as an arbalist, but you have this extra yeah this extra kind of maybe like a melee option. So that like as a as a unit that's like in fighting when things get kind of hot and heavy, mm -hmm. um, then maybe you could maybe you could it could be you know better at that and um and i mean i mean here's a, maybe something wild what if you made this like the the infantry version of like a shravamsha rider mm. or it like negates mm. the amount of pierce damage mm -hmm. because the thing about shravamsha is to kind of make them like you know potentially op is that they're right. so fast right yeah yeah. You could make this because when I think of like a musketeer, like I just see this unit like, like you know, swinging from like you know, like the rafters <laughs> or something, that's right, right? Right. Yeah. And and so I feel like something that's a musketeer needs to be kind of like an agile unit. Yeah. Um, just because of like the literary, you know, like exactly. stereotypes. Right. 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 And so maybe that's one of the things that's could maybe like, you know, maybe it's like a, you know, a because you get hand cannons with the Civ too, right? Right. Um, and so, and so instead of like an anti -caval cavalry hand cannon, maybe you have like a hand cannon that's like fast, but it's a bit more of a glass cannon mm -hmm. and doesn't have, right? But mm -hmm. you're relying though on this like dodge mechanic to say, like, be able to get in range and then try to like run away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but but you can never stay. But the thing is, right? You know, you can't fight positionally with the unit, so it's not the kind of unit that can hold ground in the same way that like an arbalist can. Kind of like how right. Burgundians with the Custillier, like yeah. a really strong unit, um, but it can't hold ground very well. But because this would be an infantry unit that maybe is a bit fast for an infantry unit, mm -hmm. then you know. It would be like it would be harder to run away, and so I don't think it would have the the that same like opness of something like a Shervamsha rider or a Custillier because they're just too fast. They run away for long enough, and they you know they you know the the, the Custillier is doing a million damage again, and the Shervamsha right. rider you know is just like nothing can catch it, and it's already it can run around long enough to where you know it can like reset its absorption meter, whereas. Whereas this guy can't, right? It would just be something to like get in range, and you you really have to you really have to micro it around. Uh, I, I I definitely yeah. think whatever mechanic you use, whether you use something like a, a Shravamsha shield or a um, mm. um, you know or a Ratha change mechanic sort of thing, yeah. or maybe even something like the Custillier charge attack. Right. I think just given the the literary thematic theme of the Musketeer, it should be an agile kind of back and yeah, forth exactly. sort of unit that, that makes perfect sense and it's yeah. really slow it's like 0.8 movement speed yeah so like it's like yeah it ain't swinging from nothing yeah <laughs> but but yeah so give it you know it should be yeah uh, it should be fun and and i yeah and that's the thing i think that the unit as of right now like the bakery is really fun mm -hmm. like the musketeer should be just as fun
Uh, especially if you can make them from archery ranges anyways. Like, we would want to see a lot of them on the field. Mm -hmm. And usually when we're seeing, like, a lot of units, like, typically, like, like these agile units that are kind of, like, you know, getting killed off a lot or something, like, that could be a place for it. Nice. All right. So, yeah, I'd say maybe um, flavor. Let's call this one, like, a five. I'm going back from a four and a five. I think it's pretty good. I, I like the flavor of the Dutch a lot. I did, yeah. And then... Yeah. I think maybe a three for the the strength. I don't I don't I don't think it's OP. Uh, no, I don't. Unless I mean, you get to musketeer, the, the unique unit. Yeah, spell. other than the unique unit, um, I I do think on arena, I could see this being a really yeah. really tough sieve, but maybe in a good way. Like maybe we you know. Um, because, I mean, this would be, like, a kind of a hard sieve to castle drop, which, you know, like, yeah. for, you know, people like me who, like, I think, you know, I don't play much arena, I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, but uh, I also think, too, the team bonus could be revised, just because, you know, there's a lot of sieves that don't get bombard cannons. Mm -hmm. That's and true. so it's just like, you know, I don't know. Because, like, with the Koreans bonus, right, with, like, the Mangonel... Uh, you know, minimum range being reduced. It's like, well, you know, we all may have occasion to make mangonels, even though it's not the best team bonus. It's mangonels aren't as common in team mm -hmm. games. I, I think, I think that we can have in a more interesting team bonus as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure what that would be, but it just feels, yeah, it, it just feels a little. Uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel that exciting to me but in that way. But yeah. I think overall, the sieve is is really neat. And I would agree. Like, you know, I think flavor-wise, you know, like, you know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, you know, like above, you know, like above average flavors to something like a four. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, yeah, you know, the sieve, uh, you know, you have some, you have some like okay cavalry, but not overpowered, right. some good archers, some decent, some decent infantry. I mean, you know. You know, obviously, like, you can see the parallels with the Portuguese, which, I mean, I don't know, maybe for better or for worse, because, you know, I actually kind of like Portuguese Civ, but I know a lot of people, uh, you know, don't think... Yeah, they are good. a lot like the Portuguese. So, I, I was about to say, yeah. one of the things about the Civ that's interesting is how it doesn't drive you into any particular strategy. I mean, I guess you get right. the infantry armor, but no one, you don't main infantry most of the time, so... You know, it's yeah. like, you, you can't go archers, you can't go knights. Yeah, that flexibility, and the Portuguese mm -hmm. are a lot like that. Yeah, they're very similar. Gun, yeah, once I mean, gunpowder opens up, you're kind of a gunpowder. Right, sieve. right. And it's too to think about, right? Like how your your your, your men at arms opening with this sieve, for instance, is going to be pretty strong. Yeah. Because it's kind of like yeah. you know you're getting, uh, you know, like the Malian bonus in a way, like from the start. But you're also mm -hmm. getting you're also getting that melee armor. And right, like how many times when you do men at arms openings mm -hmm. and like you like kind of like cross paths with their, yep. you know, men at arms. And now yep. you have to have, and like, and you're going to be able to, and so it's like when you go up against Maggers or something or Japanese, you're like, oh, this is not good. Um, it would be kind of the same thing with this civilization. And so it would really boost that men at arms opening in a way that would be pretty cool. I mean, other than that, you don't have a lot of, uh, I think, early game bonuses. And so I could, again, like Portuguese, right? Right. Um, like, but the thing that Portuguese, right? Like, you, know, the, you have the gold discount that helps you get some feudal age archers out, but gold really isn't scarce at that point. So, yeah, I think this, I think this civilization plays out a bit more towards a bit like Portuguese. It just does feel a little, it feels a little generic. Like, if I'm mm -hmm. playing this on Arabia, it's going to feel a little generic in the mid game to me. Mm hmm. Um, and, and that would be, and I don't know, I don't know if that's a, a problem or not, but I mean, but see going, but it's that parallel with the Portuguese though, right? Like the Portuguese get that gold discount. Right. And what you're doing with the bakery is you're baking it in huh? <laughs> into right into your farms, but I do think the one knock on that is that, well, but you should be seeding a lot of farms. So as long as you make like the bakery 
right? You know, the new farms that get seeded on it. As long as you're getting a little bit of gold bump there, I think like you could basically make it like, well, if you're playing, it's kind of like the Portuguese bonus, but instead of having to make the, the unit to get it, you have to make a farm to get it. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, you know, so, so I, yeah, I think the fact that it has kind of a vanilla tech tree is, is not so bad. I mean, I think in some ways it kind of has a worse tech tree than, uh, than Portuguese, just because like you don't get the last armor with right. the sieve. Right. Um, and that's like, and that's, and that, God, that is, and that is so important for raiding in the late game. Uh, but that's fine, right? It shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be a Portuguese clone. Uh, I'm just thinking about like what, how I would, I guess that one of the differences is that your men at arms opening is, is going to be probably stronger than a sieve like Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So like, but I feel like Portuguese, you're going to say more. Ah, uh, yeah, it's really tricky, but it's a good sieve. I think overall, like I would, I, you know, I, I, I you know, definitely mess around with the musketeer. And I would think about what you would give this sieve to to help it get through feudal age. Um, because yeah. the infantry armor tech is more just a boost to your opening, which is a good boost, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But just like, you know, you know, I would ask the question, does this sieve need something to help it get through the uh the, the feudal age. I'm not sure if, if that answer is yes or not, but I'd at least think about it. Yeah. You know, the one thing I would, I, I've, I tend to avoid in my analysis of these sieves any kind of like, um, so kind of going deep into the historical side of things or the, mm, um, I'm yeah. not, and I'm not like, I'm not going to even begin to broach the question of whether these sieves quote unquote deserve to be in or not. But right. uh, the one thing I will say especially because we're talking about maybe the Civ needing a little bit more, is they even have in the intro paragraph to talk about the religious and political turmoil to free the Dutch from their imperial overlords. And if you know yeah. anything about the, the, the Dutch, the, the Spanish um, occupation, and just the, the religious conflicts, the Enlightenment is, is birthed here, um, I'm really surprised that we don't see something with either the university mm -hmm. or the monastery. Yeah. And I don't know what really that would be, point. but... No, 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 no. That's a great point, right? And like the Portuguese, you know, like inviting that comparison, right? Like they like create, they research technologies faster, mm -hmm. right? You know? Mm -hmm. And so it does seem like, because cause I was kind of thinking, right? When I, when I saw that take advantage of religious and political turmoil, like I, I was thinking to myself, like, is there a way that you can have like free heresy as right. a skin bonus? Because like that would be, because, because like, it's so strong. I mean, it's a thousand gold mm -hmm. and being able to get it for free. Like, even if like, so even if you had like with the sieve, like you have knights that like, so like one of the things with like Japanese and Goths is that, you know, you have castle age knights that are fully upgraded, but it's like, ah, oh, but I don't have the last armor. Right. So, you know, I gotta be really careful how I go into it. And, and they wind up becoming really situational. But if you had like free heresy, like all of a sudden you have this sieve where it's like, there's a lot of incentive to make knights in the mid game mm -hmm. because you know, like, like dude, like monks are everywhere now. Right. Like I'm like, I'm seeing like, like there is, you know, religious turmoil in age of empires too. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, like I need to be freed from right. <laughs> you know the religious from like i'm seeing dude, i'm seeing like i feel like a year ago i know like you know you would see monks sometimes but like now it's just like monks are just and they're so strong yeah. in that like in that like early part of the mid game and so it would be cool to like have a sieve where it's like well your imperial age cavalry is like not that great and you need to get off of it but it's like but again thinking about this like trade-off it's like but you know mm -hmm. Instead of gifting my opponent a knight, right? He just like you know, he just falls over dead, and it's and like that right there, like that yeah. trade, huge, yeah. Because like it's basically like conversions are only like half as effective, exactly. And that's just so massive at that stage of the game. Um, so maybe right, you know, I could see maybe, you know, that being a. Uh, I don't know, like, you know, 
I wonder how strong this like fortified walls bonus, like this free bonus is. Mm -hmm. If maybe it's possible that like that could be the team bonus and maybe like free heresy could be a civ bonus. Because that's the thing, it would help you a lot in the mid game with the civ. Right. Um right. To, Which to is that. where they need it. Yeah, yeah, because I think you could get away be again because most civilizations are so similar in feudal age. Mm -hmm. I think that you could probably get away with just like, hey, they're men at arm. If you play men at arms, you're going to have a better opening, and maybe you can snowball that into an advantage. Uh, but you're going to have to play in terms of your timings. You're going to have to play it like pretty standard because you don't really have any eco bonuses. And that's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, right. I can do right. that. And then it's like in the mid game where it feels like civilizations really start to separate. Um, and so, yeah, and if you could, you know, you could kind of have these, like, you know, uh, you know, these, like, really, you know, like, with free heresy, it's like, you know, that would, that would kind of help counter monks a, a bit, but without, you know, you know, but in a way that doesn't make monks useless, right? Because, hey, yeah. you know, if a monk kills a knight, like, that's still, that's still, I think you could argue, you know, better value, mm -hmm. right? But right now, it's just an absurd value thing right, right. out of it. So I can see that being pretty. I can see that being pretty neat. Um, but uh, but yeah, but no, you're right. Like something, and that would be kind of something that would get in like the religious, political, you know, mm -hmm. at least the religious kind of aspect just of this the, description. The thematic of it. Yeah. element of it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I was going to ask you. Yeah. Do you think for being like a naval sieve, do you think that the sieve is strong enough on water? Okay, so galleys have plus one attack in the castle age, and then with yeah. sheep swerf, docks work twenty five percent faster. So, yeah. um, I guess so. It, uh, kind of. The question is: is how much does the naval control snowball off of what you do in okay. feudal age? Right. Because uh, I, yeah. I think these For bonuses aren't terrible. Yeah. If you were starting the game in the Castle Age, I think these are, right, these exactly. are pretty good. It's like a Berber bonus for yeah, the water. Exactly. Docks were 25% yeah, yeah. faster. The galleys are also stronger on top of that. Plus one attack yeah. for every galley that adds up. But yeah. that's assuming that you're starting in the Castle Age or, or you're at a neutral ground in Castle Age. You have right. nothing to help you in the Feudal Age. And yeah. in my experience, again, at like around 1200 ELO, uh, naval control is pretty much won or lost by the time you're in Castle Age. Yeah. No, I, and, and I think that and I think that mid elo players have a lot of trouble coming back on water right. too. That's what I'm um, saying. Yeah, I, yeah. And now I think that like this would you know if your docks are working faster, maybe you can mess army faster. But again, mm -hmm. I think kind of like the Persians, that could be a little bit of a red herring because like you know, it's like I have a sieve that has a bad economy, and now my docks are working faster. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. how, now I'm expending more resources and I don't really have a bump. I mean, the bakery can kind of help with that because mm -hmm. ship gold. So, but on the, I don't know. I, I just worry that like, you know, you're going to find that you don't have the resources you need. Um, I think I agree with you on this. Like, I feel like galleys having plus one attack in castle age. It feels a little boring to me. Right. Um, One thing I, I think about what if, like galleys could, I don't know. Like I'm thinking of like maybe they could benefit. Like what if you said that like galleys benefited from like thumb ring or something? Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. If, I don't know if that makes any sense. You know. Yeah. But it's, but it's kind of like you could buy the Saracen bonus on on water because I don't mind this sieve being like a late game water sieve. I, right. I think that that's. You know, and maybe even like the time period that like the Dutch kind of come about. Exactly, that makes perfect sense. Like, yeah. So it does seem it, it's it seems sensible, where it's like you know, you know, but but there's the but there's the history side and the gameplay side where right. it's like okay, but like because things snowball so much in the game. So like the galleys having plus one attack in Castle Age, I would, I I'd go back. I'd I'd think about is there a way that we can really make that bonus pop because it's between like that and your team docks. Like those are really your only water mm -hmm. bonuses. So for this to be a naval sieve and to, and to just have those bonuses 
I think they real. I think they need to pop a bit more and to get like and to have to pay for half of the Persian bonus. Like, I just you know, I mean, it's not a bad bonus by any means. I mean, you got to get a castle to do it, etc. But it will help you in in the late game. And so I, I actually I like that castle age tech. Oh, I agree. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially, I mean, if this sieve, I'm just checking to see if the sieve has ship right, and it does. So, like. That's pretty cool. Um, but I think we need I need a more interesting bonus yeah. or either the galley line or the fire galley line. I've always thought a really interesting idea for the fire galleys is that like if you could if you could somehow like garrison units in them mm. and boost the attack of mm -hmm. like like I thought like fire galleys, like if you garrisoned units in them to boost their attack, would it sort of simulate how in naval combat oftentimes you had like landings, right, right, on ships, and like yeah. that's kind of what I've always wanted to to simulate. I don't know how practical it is because you'd have to like make units, like you'd have to put units into a ship, and right. and of course know, when you I, lose a ship, then you're losing that much more. Yeah, and it's just like I mean it's a trade off, right? right, because you're like increasing the power of it. But I just I feel like it would take a lot to make it worth the investment. So I'm not saying that that would be a route to go to go mm -hmm. down here. It's just something I think about. Um, but but yeah, but but something something in something a little bit more interesting. And I think if it can help them in feudal age, given that you don't have an eco bonus in feudal age and you don't have a dock bonus, right? I mean, just 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 something you know i don't i mean is there let me just i'm just because i some of the bonuses escape me is there a bonus for like galleys training at a faster rate for any of the water zips because like viking uh, is off discount yeah i don't know about for the galleys i don't think that there is a there is, no the galleys faster no. right maybe do so so maybe i mean imagine that as a team bonus mm -hmm. like so now that's a water sieve, man, yeah. because you can, like you can get these like galleys out faster mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, your economy is going to suck in the same way, you know, that, but like, Hey, like we talked about, like numbers are everything. Right. So if you can get galleys yeah. out faster, uh, I mean, now all of a sudden, and now that's a sieve when like I'm playing on islands in a team game, I'm mm -hmm. all like, Hey bro, let's, somebody's got to play Dutch. Exactly. You know? Dutch and Dravidian so, OP combo. I mean, right dude, there. yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You, have really, <laughs> you have to be really, you have to be really careful about it. I think, yeah, I, because you know, like in the same way that like Britons are just like absurd, right? Uh, because you know, they, like if you're like Brit, if you're in like a three v three and you have Britons, Mayans flank, and it's like, <laughs> hey, Mayans, congratulations, you are what you are, but you also <laughs> have half of the Britons bonus. It's like, oh, fantastic, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so yeah uh maybe maybe it's not a maybe it's not a team bonus uh like in retrospect but could it be a sim bonus or they train yeah. a bit faster uh, i'm oh. feeling that that's that's an option I, absolutely I, yeah, yeah no so but no cool cool sieve and just honestly like you know you know cool project like this mm -hmm. is this is i i hope that i hope that projects like this are yes inspiring and i think it's really good that you're you're doing a, a video on this and, and one of the reasons why like you know like i enjoy it and i'm i'm happy to to, to be on it and, and think about it because i think that i think that you doing videos like this it's like a real service to the the community at large and if you know you know if people kind of see this and it gets out there and you know you know the and the thoughts go out there then if you know I mean, who knows where it gets to and how things get there. But, you know, I think putting this, I think, I think one thing we've seen is that, is that some of the discussion around possibilities in the game have been, uh, and I think, you know, to their credit, been incorporated by developers. Like, how long did people say, like, you wouldn't a camel scout be cool? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. that was for, forever. And you had a bunch of people who were like, no, it's lame. Like, that's, and, you know, and right. right, you know, the jars we see, you know, camel scouts. And so it's like clearly, you know, these things, it's it's hard to tell like when they'll have an impact and in what way. Um, but I think if the conversations out there, you know, not only can can it, you know, help 
the developers think about what are good ideas, but maybe even what are some bad ideas to avoid. So no, this is this oh, is a yeah. good project. This is a good project in for uh, that these guys are doing, and uh, and it's good to do this video. So yeah, cool. again, my hats are off to these guys coming up with these yeah. ideas and, and finding ways to take a historical civilization and you know translate them in a way that's interesting and, and capture some interesting uh, bonuses. Uh, and try to try to get flavor just out of plus one this, plus two exactly. that. You know, um, I I love it. I love spotlighting this kind of thing, and um, my hat is off to him. So I I love getting the opportunity to sit down and yeah. talk some yeah. age. Yeah, and, and the and the you know and the criticism you know here it's like it's all it's oh all oh yeah you know, absolutely absolutely it's I, all and they have and, they, and these guys have you know like. For every like idea that's like, well, I don't know about that one. Like, there's like, you know, you know, there's you know, like four or five where it's all like, oh, I never thought of that. That's pretty rad. Exactly. Oh, and and on top of that too is when I'm over here saying like, I don't know about this too. Again, yeah. I've, I've talked with Anatarian, and I know he's he definitely is not shooting from the hip. You know, so it wouldn't surprise me to get a comment below saying, hey, here's why we did it this way, and here's here's my oh, yeah. response to to where you guys are coming from. And, yeah, um, yeah, they know this stuff. And that should be, yeah, and that should be encouraged too. Yeah, so that's, yeah. I, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy it when this video comes out. <laughs> All right, so let's do let's do one more today, and then I think we'll call it there. We'll look at the Georgians. All right, let's go. All right, the Kingdom of Georgia, long considered the golden age of the Georgian people, existed for nearly 500 years at the crossroads of Central Asia. A bastion of Christianity, Georgia developed a distinctive, brilliant literary culture and art and their unique alphabet is still used today. It was a diplomatic player in the affairs of the Holy Lands and Rus, an important ally of the Byzantine Empire, and the protector of a coterie of vassal states. So here's what we got. Texts are 50% cheaper in ages after they are first available. You receive 50 of every resource each age. Trebs and monks train 30% faster. Each garrisoned relic reduces knight, monk, and monaspa gold cost by five to a maximum of five, 25 gold off. The team bonus monks have plus two line of sight and plus two monk armor. Uh, the unique tech, Castle Age Devotion, monks have plus one range, 100 food and 200 gold. The Imperial Age Royal Guards Cavalry regenerate 1,000 food and 800 gold. And then you have the Manaspa, which is an anti-camel cavalry. Uh, so I, I, I'm kind of imagining it like a cataphract, where it's a cav unit that does that actually has a bonus against a unit that typically is good against it. Um, which is interesting. I'm, I'm going to highlight this part first with the Manaspa. It says that it does pierce damage, but I don't see anything oh, about range. I, I saw the same thing. I, I'm not sure if that's a typo or what. Either that's a typo, or it's maybe like an inverted throwing axeman kind of thing, where it, you know, it it does melee attack, but it's it's pierce damage. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean that would that would kind of be a nerf because mm. camp might because pierce armor in imperial age is plus two, and the melee armor is still plus one, and camels have base zero of both. So mm. doing pierce damage, you're not going to be doing like as much mm. damage. But it doesn't. But I mean, you're doing an attack bonus against camels anyways, so like you know. Well, it's whatever I think. Right, right. And then if it's doing yeah. pierce, it does bonus damage against rams, but then the rams have a bunch of pierce armor. So anyway. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So thematically, this sieve makes a lot of sense. I, th I think of all of the sieves we've looked at so far, actually, probably of all of the sieves on the list. Period. The Georgians have the are one of the most popular, and uh, I don't I don't know about Jim Stradamus, but uh, mm -hmm. but. You know, Kaiser Stradamus over here uh, yeah, yeah, would, yeah. would predict that if, if we get any more sieves in Age of Empires 2, and I think that's likely, uh, yeah. the Georgians are maybe among the, the top oh, rung. So, so, Jim, Jim Stradamus would agree with that. Jim, Jim Stradamus, yeah. What did I, what did I say? Yeah, Jim Stradamus. Jim, yeah, Jim, yeah, Jim Stradamus. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I, all right, I was, I was hoping I didn't say like... I'll tell you, oh, yeah. No, 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 you know, you're good, you're John Stradamus. No, Jim Stradamus. Ah, you know? ah, <laughs> so, ah. yeah, but... Uh, yeah, so the Georgians, I think they're really likely to show up, and that makes this Civ draft really interesting because I wouldn't be surprised if we could come back and draw a comparison between what ends up in the game and, yeah. and what we're looking at here. Yeah. Uh, 
A religious sieve makes a lot of sense. I, I would put money down that an official Georgian kingdom will have a, a Georgian sieve. It's going to have some kind of monk bonus. Yeah. Uh, so let's break this down. Tech's fifty percent cheaper in ages after they're first available. What do you think? So that's cool, actually. I think that I, what I really like about this idea is the trade-off aspect, mm -hmm. where it really makes you think. Um, it really makes you think about. I'm trying to think about the technologies. Because there are a lot of technologies that you get later. So basically, like most of your like, like a lot of times people, you know, if you're playing like cavalry, you get forging later in like maybe in castle age because armor is usually important on cavalry. Mm -hmm. um, archer armor would be a good one where sometimes you delay. But I, but I like that idea. I mean, you know, in that you're using, right? Like if I'm in feudal age and I'm like, man, do I want to really, you know, and I'm in like a, an archer battle or something and i might think like, hmm well do i want to get archer armor now or i might be like yeah but i can wait it later and i can right. get it cheaper right, right. And so so I, I like introducing that thought process into the game i guess i'm just thinking the, the one thing i might change about this bonus is that i would say that the technologies I would restrict it to certain kinds of technologies, though, because there's like, I mean, imagine like techs at the monastery in Castle that are really like expensive on gold, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden become fifty percent cheaper. Mm -hmm. That's like, I could see that being kind of OP. Mm -hmm. um, but it is worth noting too that the really, really exper uh, uh, expensive imperial age technologies are not going to benefit from this, right? Right. So I so I don't think it's it, it like I'm trying to think of what are some of the real like I mean heresy I think is a castle age tech yeah um, yeah so like being able to get like I mean okay there's five I mean basically at the monastery which now again this is a religious sieve so saving monastery resources is not that big of a deal to me uh, mm -hmm. in some ways um, and I'm just trying to think of other techs i mean well a lot of times you get wheelbarrow and handcart you know in a, in a later age right you know a lot of times you delay wheelbarrow in a castle age so being able to get that cheaper right mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah so so i think this is definitely a bonus that would affect the game for sure um and the spirit of it i think is a pretty good one i would just think about uh if it needs some boundaries um and whether 50% is the number but the spirit's really cool um 50% of each resource each age mm -hmm. is interesting without um, needing to mine any stone you can throw yeah. down two watchtowers in the feudal age yeah so the extra which again for the georgians historically makes a lot of sense they if you can classify real historical people that's this way they were a very mm -hmm. defensive civilization so yeah yeah maybe and that it's fits. like no, I, I, I kind of dig it, actually. I mean, the Persians have, like, 50 food, 50 wood at the start. Mm -hmm. And that's not overpowered. I don't think the Ethiopian is getting 100 of food and gold. It's strong, but it's not overpowered. And this is, like, it's weaker, mm -hmm. but it's also more flexible than the Ethiopian's bonus. Because it's like you said, yeah. right? Like, being able to get, like, now instead of 200 stone, I have 250 stone. Like it open it opens up the playbook a little bit, um, and it's a bonus that kind of gets weaker as the game goes on too. So I think that's cool. Um, yeah, the trebuchet bonus is trebuchet is training thirty percent faster. Always kind of thought trebuchet is training faster as a bonus would be cool. I mean, like man, you will like. I kind of like it though. I think it's neat. Um, being able to like you know w winning treb wars is really important obviously mm -hmm. um and i don't know like the 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 berber's casba you have to buy it to train your trebuchets faster but a lot of people do i don't think that's overpowered yeah so, but to, to play devil's advocate though 
Everything, so, yeah. everything else so far is locked behind some kind of unique tech, right? So it, it takes that extra time to sure. kick in. This, yeah, yeah. as soon as you hit imp, you know, you're, yeah. you're able to train those trebs faster and you can yeah. snowball. Uh, yeah. that, and that might not be a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's... I think I would I would get rid of monks training faster. I think just because the Lithuanians already can kind of do that, right? I guess their their monasteries do work faster, if I remember right. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 So I would. Yeah. I. I you know. I. I. I maybe drop that. Um. I don't know if I'd replace it, but. But I, yeah, I think trebuchet's training faster. I could dig it actually. It's not. That's not bad. Um, but I, but your your point is right. Like it is something, like you know, and that's when the treb war, right? Like you know, mm. what do you do? Like queue up trebs, right? Um, but you know, but that's you know, but I mean, hey, Hun trebs get you know more accurate as soon as they hit the next age. So I don't know. Like you know, I could. I I'm not against it, right? Um. Garrison and Relics reducing Knight, Monk, and the unique unit, right? The gold cost by Yeah, five. so I, I, I took a note on this. If I can pull it yeah. up here. Uh, so Knights cost 75 gold. Um, Zlacta mm -hmm. Privileges for the Polish reduces the gold cost by 45 gold down to 30. Right. So this is kind of a diet version of Zlacta Privileges. Uh, obviously, yeah. it just doesn't cost a unique tech. It's, it's just with Relics. So much, it's easier to get to. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It might be hard to collect five relics, mm -hmm. uh, even with monks that are like better. But you know, with the the privileges, right? How do you say it? It's a locked up. Uh, I I just yeah, it's, I call it yeah. locked up, but that's that's no I, guarantee. Okay. That's the right pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, some somebody in the comments will correct us because yeah. I know I've been corrected a few times Absolutely. as. You know, as I should be. Uh, you know, <laughs> Sh shout shout out to Poland. Right? Um, <laughs> but uh, but it's just it's easier, right? I I kind of I kind of dig it though. So, uh, um, I'm you know I don't know I kind of dig it. Um, I I don't really I don't really dig the unique unit, right. but um, with it, but for knights and monks, I like it because it's like how often are you going to get five relics? Almost never. Okay. So, what are you probably going to get? Well, let's say that maybe most of the time you're going to get at least two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're going to have knights that cost 60 food and 65 gold. Right. Right? And if you get three, you basically have the Portuguese bonus for knights. Mm -hmm. But you have to get there to get it. Mm -hmm. And most going from 185, again, it's kind of like it's kind of like getting the Portuguese bonus, but you have to work to get there. And so it's not as good. And that's, you know, you already have a potentially interesting eco bonus to, to get there. Um, so I, I think I think it's all right to me, um, probably depending on the rest of their tech tree. Yeah, you miss Arbalest. So if you're missing Arbalest, I think I'm on board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because you're, you're kind of reliant on your night line at that point. Right. And so that works for me. The team bonus is fine too, I guess. I mean, the line of what, sight. Are... What is monk armor? Mm. It's, it's like it's, I guess units do bonus damage to monks, and yes. Georgian monks are a little more resistant to that. Yeah. Okay. So, like, maybe I mean, I, I'm sure that the these guys have crunched the numbers, but I bet it's something like I would imagine that plus two monk armor probably lets them take like one more hit from a light cast. Again, I don't know, like, the... I, I'm yeah. sure that they've done the math on that because yeah. it seems specific enough. But but that, what I think, would be what you want to do, where you have, like, right. one extra chance to take a hit from the light. Um, and the line of sight's good because sometimes you, like, just send monks out there to, like, find relics, you know? Mm -hmm. And that would be good in Arena, too. With I mean, monks already have, like, a lot of line of sight. I mean, you know. Uh, but, but, like, I think on, like, Arabia sometimes, you know when you don't have the map completely scouted, it's like sometimes you just send a monk out to go scout and kind of keep tabs on it. And as it finds a relic somewhere, you're like, okay, grab it. Let's go. Right. Uh, monk, monk, monks are a, a great way if you're in like heavy fighting or something, like to just like send one of them old dudes out there and like you're scouting and getting information about the map and where you're going to expand to later. Right. Um, if, you know, your cavalry is, uh, you know, is otherwise occupied. So um, 
I, I, I like it. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. Uh, one oh, of the things I really like about the Civ is this Castle Age deck, Devotion. You get one additional range. Uh, oh, that could be, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm glad it's locked behind the castle. That's the thing. Yeah. It's locked, locked behind the castle. That's good. Right. Um, right. But, yeah, it just makes them uh, a very, very strong uh, I, I option. Think it, yeah, but, like, they get block printing, too. Yeah. Yeah, so in the Imperial Age, they're going to have the furthest oh, reaching monks. That's insane. Yeah. Monks, monks with do they get redemption? They get redemption. That's an insane block printing monks with redemption and an extra range. <laughs> you, you were talking earlier about the Dutch, and you're like, someone saved me from these monks, and I'm thinking, yeah, the Georgians, you're gonna, you're gonna Dude, like these guys. That, <laughs> that seems. That seems pretty overpowered. Like even bombard cannons with siege rams don't outrange them. Mm -hmm. Man, that's and it's only a hundred food, two hundred gold. I'd make it more expensive if it sticks around. Mm -hmm. um, but like cavalry regenerate. That seems bonkers. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, this whole Manaspa thing as well, like, so, you're telling me that, like, this unit that does 14 damage, I don't even care if it's Pierce Armor or not, that does 14 damage and attack bonus against Camels, and reduce the gold cost by 5, can cost 70 food, 25 gold? Nah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it can regenerate bro. on top of that. It can yeah. regenerate <laughs> Wow, uh, we got and it has a speed of one point four five, and it creates in twelve seconds. Yeah. No yeah. way. We yeah. gotta like, yeah, we gotta fix. Yeah, you gotta do something about this guy. I <laughs> uh, dude, no, that's like because like the lightest is seventy food, fifty gold, and like people are like, yeah, you know, like it's like super cheap, right? And I think Spirit Law did a video, and like I think he, I think he concluded that like. It's even like cost efficient against halves. Mm. Mm -hmm. So like this thing <laughs> is, and it has two pierce armor. No man, yeah. like you gotta, you gotta. This is the most. This is the most like op thing we've seen today. <laughs> um, I, 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 as much as, I, and I kind of like the idea of. So. Okay. Like, Cavalry regenerating, I think, is silly. Um, I, I, I'm I'm not against. I'm not against maybe light cavalry. I don't even know. I'd have to think about that. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Ca cavalry regeneration, because because the reason the reason why cavalry regeneration, I think, is is different here, is that. Cavalry can run away. Mm -hmm. um, and and although, like, I think the comparison here, like, if I was in uh, the, the, the the mod creator's mind here, I think what they would say is that, yeah, but you know what? Think about the Berbers. And my grubby camels is not OP, right? Right. Um, but my grubby camels only affects, like, camels and camel archers. You know, right. two units that, like, are kind of situational and... Whereas cavalry are like are light cavalry are regenerating HP, um, because like light cavalry, you know, like so much of the times they just kind of like run around on the map. So I would, and plus too, like with the tech, like royal guards, cavalry, like I feel like there should be something defensive almost that helps that helps preserve their. Because I think that according to this, it says they miss heavy camel and battle elephants, so they're getting paladin. Yeah, they're getting paladins. Yeah, that potentially cost fifty gold. That can regenerate HP. Come and, on, and, then, and then have the cheaper monks behind that to heal them up. Oh, the, 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 the cheaper man. monaspa behind oh, that, so you can't man. counter them with, with camels. Yeah, oh, that's... Oh, man. I mean, think <laughs> about, like the, the you, dude, the poles are out here. They're, they're getting like 
We're getting shortchanged, man. They're like, dude, we're like, we don't even get like armor on Cavaliers over here. No way. You gotta do, you gotta do something about. I was honestly, what I was gonna say. I think if you want your cavalry to regenerate, I kind of feel like maybe you don't even get cavalier. Mm. Something. Mm. No, or or no. Let me. I'm trying to think of an alternative. Like, what do you think about this though? What if the civilization doesn't get cavalier, right? I say you can get, but you can get like cheaper knights, but that, but that, uh, but you can remove the gold cost from knights with your imperial age tech. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait, wait, wait! Remove the gold cost from knights. So yeah. So basically, what you so basically, Trash I mean knights. that would, yeah. And like maybe change the garrison relic bonus around a little bit. You could, okay. okay. Um, but like, cause so like, what would a trash knight be? Well, it's got it does ten damage, has one hundred and twenty HP, and it's gonna have the melee armor, mm -hmm. and it's gonna cost. And maybe and maybe let's just say, you know, trash knights would cost like eighty food because compare that right. unit to the Magnar Hussar, right? You know, same damage. It's gonna have fifty more HP. It's gonna have a little more melee armor and the same pierce armor. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of the same unit. Like, Magdar Hussars are kind of like knights that you get in Imperial Age. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, like you know, like Castle Age knights. And so, uh, that also, you know, do a bonus. Um, so, yeah, I could, like, I could see... I don't know if that fits with, like, the theme of the Civ, like, historically or anything. The idea of having, like... The idea of having trash knights mm -hmm. um but i mean i mean you can you see you still make you know a little bit more about the history of the civ like is this a civilization that should get paladin you know that's a great question here's what i know about the georgians and i'm not yeah. i don't claim to be some kind of uh georgian yeah, yeah, yeah. expert i've lived in georgia but that that was the state not uh not, uh -huh. not the country right uh, uh so yeah it should be like they uh they get the falcons that's their that's their unique no. unit. Uh, no, anyway. Uh, but um, what I do know about them is that they were a mountain kingdom. And something I'm really surprised by is that they don't have anything kind of like a, a Tatar bonus. Like some right. kind of, you know, when you're, when you're up on elevation or, you're, or maybe you're needing to fight up elevation or whatever, you, you get, yeah. you know, some, something. I'm, I'm surprised there isn't anything like that for the Georgians. Yeah. And they don't get thumb ring either with this sieve. So, mm -hmm. like, so cav archers are a no go. Right. Um, so you're pretty reliant, and you don't get arbalist either. So, like, this is a civilization. Again, I'm trying to kind of think through the thoughts of mm -hmm. the the mods, the mod creators here, and I it feels like the thought process is to me is that you really you're really reliant on heavy cavalry as your power unit. Because you don't get arbalist, um, and I don't see any like any like infantry bonus for like like you know mm -hmm. for playing like late game champions or something. So you're really reliant on heavy cavalry, and so 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 based on that, it feels like a sieve maybe that does need. Uh, that does need, you know, that does need, I mean, Paladins is so expensive. Um, yeah, you know. And to be fair, I, wonder, I mean, the, the, the regenerating cab, it, it does cost a thousand food and 800 gold. That's, that's Imperial Age all over again. Uh, you know, I know, but, cost -wise. Right, so, right, so that, are, right, but if that's the argument, right, that, you know, cavalry regenerate and it costs so much, then it's like, I, I feel like in one v ones, it is just it's you know probably never good because I mean God, you can't even research paladin in one v one half the time, right? Um, and so it's just a tech that just doesn't get used, and that's kind of a shame, right? If a tech doesn't get used, um, yeah, you know maybe maybe in maybe in team games for like you know late late game or something, um, but like I, I really think that the garrison relic. Uh, bonus is something that could be made a little more, more interesting. Something so yeah, something more something more interesting 
I, so what I'm trying to think, if this is a sieve that's reliant on heavy cavalry, then they're, I'd like to help them get there, right? And I'm trying to think of maybe something with garrisoning relics. Like, if we kind of, like, model them after Burgundians in this way, like, if garrison relics somehow maybe, like, the reduce the cost of... Because because to get Paladin, mm. right? Because mm -hmm. you can't use their technology bonus. You have to pay full price on Paladin, mm -hmm. right? So maybe what you can use the Garrison Relic bonus to do in some way is to help you research, like, some of those Imperial Age techs somehow. I like that, yeah, yeah. So maybe what it does for, like, it, it you know... I mean, it's one of those... Yeah, I mean, I can see it stacking in some, some ways that can maybe get troublesome but like if if something that can help the sieve yeah just anything that can help the sieve get there mm -hmm. i think would would work um let me ask you this would mm. would giving like would, would giving knights plus one knight armor per relic would that like would do you think that would throw the balance off too much Plus one knight, armor. like like per relic, like yeah. So so basically, you, your knights take reduced damage from pikemen or camels per relic. Oh, like oh, like so cavalry armor. Oh, right, ca yeah, ca oh, cav armor. Yeah. I'm trying to think of all the things that do. I like that idea a lot, actually. I'm just trying to think of units that do bonus damage against cavalry. And if it would like really change the, no, I th I think that's a really interesting idea. And then maybe you could just like we could just like scrap this unique unit, mm -hmm. this Manaspa, and make it something, uh, and and make it something else. <laughs> 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 well, right, like you're kind of like you're kind of building in the anti camel cavalry right. into their cavalry. Cause, so this is the thing, right? Like, you know what? Like, the sieve gets halberdiers. Let it rely on either like your suggestion, or you have knights that are taking that bonus damage down. Like your heavy mm -hmm. cavalry is taking that bonus damage a little bit, and you're baking that into the unit, and then giving making their unique unit something that that expands their strategy set, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would think like something ranged mm. or a unique unit. So that way it's like, cause like, so thinking of an example, for instance, say like one of the reasons I really like Bulgarians because I think Bulgarians are a civilization that they, it comes with limitations, right? but you can play them in a number of ways, despite the fact that it's a really limited suit. Because, you know, you're missing crossbow and you don't get pound either, right? But, you know, but, like, I can play, like, pretty reasonable heavy CA if I want to go the range route. I can play good infantry, even though I miss right. champion. Like, you know, I can play cavaliers, even though I miss paladin, right? So, you have all the... It's it's, it's a really uh, well-designed sieve, in my view. Um, and I think that sieves that are just, you know, like... That are kind of, like goths feel a lot of times because this sieve, by the way also doesn't get bracer um so like you really can't even make like crossbow your skirmishers are gonna be pretty whack i mean you are just like all in heavy cavalry and i think the worry is that you wind up making a heavy cavalry unit that like nothing can defeat right you know um so but if you gave them kind of like like thinking about like Spanish as a comparison where it's like, you know, conks or or the night line with Spanish typically. And then you have this really nice array of trash units to like support whichever sort of way you go. Um like like I, I don't know, yeah. I, I think about some kind of I think about some kind of cav archer unique unit, maybe something that doesn't need um that maybe doesn't I mean I honestly if you're gonna miss bracer, give him thumb ring. Hmm. Unless like I mean if you're gonna miss bracer, like right. why would I why would I ever make a cross you might as well get rid of the crossbow upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like why would I even right. 
Why am I if I can't if I can't make Arbalist, I can't get Bracer, and I can't get Thumb Ring. Like we're just like this is you know like Kelt, you know like you mm. know, Kelt level archers here. Um, and uh, I don't know, like because you gave them Thumb Ring, all of a sudden, all of a sudden Cav archers are in play with this save. And then you could kind of do what you want with the unique. I mean, you still miss okay. Bracer. Still miss Bracer. Um, but there's a little more flexibility know, there. That yeah, and I don't know if it makes sense for the Georgians. Like, I don't know if as like a, a as a historically right, mm -hmm. they were you know they made use of cavalry archers. I don't know the answer to that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a. Uh, but I think that they just need they need I I think they need a a little more diversity in their military tech tree here mm -hmm. so, yeah. all right so for me thematically probably uh, it's pretty high i uh, just based on what they've got here i think it's pretty high i'd say it's maybe a four leaning into a five i like what they've yeah, got thematically cool. yeah that's cool uh op um i guess we're thinking maybe because that the Royal Guards doesn't really come into play in a one v one more likely than not, but then in a team game, oh my god, that that can that can swing a lot. And then you've got your really strong monks. You have got cheaper knights. Yeah, like uh, 50, 50, 50 gold paladins that re regenerate HP, and that you're reducing the and that you're. Oh, I mean, I, I you know, that's hard to stop in a team game. Right, right. Uh, so yeah. Because I mean, yeah, that's uh, the, I mean, yeah, that's that's tough. Um, and then you can mix in some of those Manaspas for twenty five gold, and they have two Pierce. Oh yeah, yeah like this. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you know you got to figure out something with that. But uh, but it's I mean you know it's just a very limited sieve, and I guess I guess personally I'm just really I'm really skeptical about how extremely limited civilizations fit into. Mm -hmm. uh, fit into the balance of the game yeah um and so that would just be the worry that i have going in. all right well cool, i think that's calls up for, for today so uh all six right. down cool. we've got more to go next time uh thank you guys so much for listening in jimmy james 59 man thank you so much for joining me this was really yeah, really awesome oh dude it was a blast i love it thank you thank you man and uh maybe i'll catch you around for part two that'd be great yeah let's go for it all right cool i'll see you yeah. then Guys, thanks so much. If you enjoyed that, like the video, leave a comment below. What do you think of the sieves we've looked at so far? Uh, what do you think of our ratings? You know, stronger, weaker than we suspect? Let us know in the comments below. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, along with Jimmy James 59, signing out.